The Ohio State Buckeyes open this season tonight against the Pittsburgh Panthers. For a preview, we go to the voice of college football. Hello, everybody. I'm Lindsey Nelson with Buckeye coach Earl Bruce here on the campus at Ohio State. They open up their football season against Pitt tonight. Of course, you lost what may have been the best all-around football player, backfield man in the country, and uh, that had to be a shock. Well, absolutely the best, and we're sorry we lost, and we're just going to have to have a great team effort to make up for it. Keith is an outstanding football player, and, and we're going to miss him. We're talking about Keith Byers, who is, of course, out of action with a broken foot. Uh, will that cause you to change your offensive total plan very much? Well, I think we have a little change in our plan. We're obviously going to have to pass the ball a little more and run the fullback a little more. We think we have a fine tailback to run the ball. Whether he can run it 25 or 30 times like Keith is, is yet to be found out. But he's a good runner, and I think we could probably run him somewhere between 15 and 20 times in a ball game. I've been told by some coaches that they always learn something about that team they didn't know on opening night. Is that true? Oh, absolutely. This is going to be, it's a total new production. I don't know what's going to happen. I wish I did. This, that's what makes football exciting, Lindsay, is the fact that as a coach, you don't know what's going to happen on opening day. Ohio State in Pitt tonight. I'm Lindsay Nelson. Paul Horning will be here with me for the play-by-play -play tonight. Hope you'll join us on Super Football Saturday night. We definitely will join them. Should be a good one. What about Ohio State? Uh, you know, Keith Byers isn't there. That's what we're looking forward to. That's a big loss. You cannot lose a guy like Bowers and not hurt you. But you know, Ohio State's going to play Ohio State football. They're always this solid. they got the big, uh, strong offensive linemen, the good defensive team, and that's the way they play. They win every year. What do you say? Kevin Christopher has joined us. He'll be keeping us updated throughout the afternoon for the latest scores and highlights. And one of those games I'm going to be looking at is uh, Oklahoma State. Now, Alex, I know you said earlier, how can Oklahoma be rated number one? They haven't played a game yet. Well, this is a team that could give them some trouble. And we went to Norman, Oklahoma, and asked the guy who should know just how good Oklahoma State is. Oklahoma State has uh, had the best seasons they've had in the last couple of years. Uh, I, I, they've improved. Uh, they still uh, have to contend with Oklahoma and Nebraska, and we've been a notch above them, and hopefully we can remain that way. In the last 39 years, uh, Oklahoma and Nebraska won 37 times, and that didn't cut much slack for the rest of them. So. And it doesn't look like you're going to cut much slack for the rest of them this year, Oklahoma and Nebraska, but Oklahoma State could cause some trouble. And Pat Jones is an excellent coach out there, and he's, he runs a balanced offense. You know, last year they averaged 181 yards running and 181 yards passing. That's about as balanced as you can get. And they got a tough, tough defense. Their <laughs> toughest road game of the year we had last week at Washington, and they won that one. They play Oklahoma and Nebraska at home this year. Now, those are the only two teams, and historically they don't beat either one of those teams, but those are the only two teams that I think can, out, can upset them. Should be a good one. Tonight they got North Texas State, though, so they should be 1-0 for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with a Heisman Trophy candidate who may become one of the boys of summer. This is Turner Network Television. The Auburn Tigers are now on top of Southern Miss. The score is 13-3, and it seems that Bo Jackson has picked up where he left off last week. No running back has ever gotten off to a better start in his opening game than Auburn's the Bo Jackson. For running for the first time out of the I formation, Jackson totaled 290 yards and four touchdowns. That broke the previous mark of 275 yards by Don Nottingham of Kent State in 1969. What makes Jackson a better running back this year is his attitude, especially toward practice. In past years, he was known to coast between games, which did not always sit well with his teammates. But Jackson has learned that how you practice is how you play. If I go out and have a great day of practice, it, well, it's like it's picking up the, the whole team. I'm not trying to sound conceited, but if you go out there and there's one person that's not practicing hard and they just don't care, it's like it brings the whole team down. So this is my last season, and I'm trying to do everything in my power to try to make this season great for the Auburn Tigers. With or without the Heisman Trophy, Jackson is expected to be the top pick in next spring's NFL Draft. But Jackson is also expected to be the top pick in the Major League Baseball Draft. As the Tigers center fielder, Jackson batted over 400 with 17 home runs. And the Major League rating system, which considers hitting, power, running, fielding, and throwing, has given Jackson the highest mark of any player eligible for the draft. He has already turned out offers from the California Angels and the New York Yankees. When I was in high school, somebody come up to me and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars well i could have taken it but i'm the eighth out of ten kids 
five girls and five boys, and I'm the first to go to a major college. And I said, well, if I go to college, I could go there and be through in four years, hopefully working on a degree and bettering my football and, and base, ba baseball skills. And at the end of my fourth year, I'll decide what I'm going to do. Jackson would like to play both. But with the two professional seasons overlapping from July to October, he will clearly have to choose one over the other. And there really doesn't seem to be a precedent. We saw where John Elway turned down a baseball contract to play football with the Denver Broncos. We saw where Kirk Gibson turned down a football contract to go to the World Series with the Detroit Tigers. Alec Hawkins, you had a chance to do both. Well, I had a chance to. I averaged about four, a little over 400 uh, in high school baseball and had two Scott. Uh, uh, contracts offered to me. Uh, unfortunately, I only had one home run in four years. <laughs> What's a tough decision like that? Why'd you go football? Uh, it seemed like my, my, I was a better basketball player than anything. I played against <laughs> Jerry West. I outscored Jerry West in high school. That's right. That's well, why'd right. you take football? Because I don't have any sense. You know that. <laughs> Bo Jackson, by the way, we told you it was 13-3. to He has scored both touchdowns for Auburn. He has over 100 yards. The game is in the second quarter. There's a lot of pressure on uh, coaches to produce the turnover rate in the last five years has been 15% on the average. That means every year, one out of every seven coaches can count on being fired. At some schools, there's more pressure than others. John Fricke takes a look at both ends of the spectrum. You and I know that in many schools, there is a great deal of pressure on the part of alumni and even apparently on the part of governing boards, trustees, uh, to have strong athletic teams uh, to bring in that big money. The kind of income that a school like Notre Dame has from football alone is $16 million. University of Washington, $17 million from football alone. Now that's a lot of money. It creates a lot of pressure. Indeed it does. In any multi-million dollar business, there is pressure to produce. In college athletics, the bottom line isn't how you play the game. It's whether you win or lose. One guy asked me a question, uh, would you rather play well and just play well and if you lost, you lost. Shoot, I'd rather win and play well, to be honest with you, because that solves the whole problem right there in a nutshell. Jerry Faust is one of many coaches on the hot seat in 1985. The list includes Jackie Sherrill at Texas A&M, Pitts Fode Fazio, and Ray Perkins. Perkins had the thankless task of replacing Bear Bryant at Alabama. By Bama standards, he failed miserably his first year, a five and six season and no bowl game. Perkins managed to quiet his critics after the Tide rallied to beat Georgia on opening day this year. He must now convince not only himself, but his players and fans that Bama is back. I recognize and I accept totally that I'll be criticized. Uh, I'm not going to do things in the fashion that Coach Carl Bryant did. I plan on being here a long time, 10, 15 more years. And 15 years from now, I'll still be getting criticized. But I understand it and I accept it. Winning is only relative. At okay. Northwestern, five and six would be terrific. Now in his fifth season as head coach, Dennis Green has won only seven games total, yet his job is in no immediate jeopardy. I signed a new three-year contract, but that doesn't mean uh, that you're without pressure because there might be some people in the stands who feel like the school made a mistake in giving that three-year contract and who don't hesitate maybe to voice their opinions. The pressure to produce has led some coaches to cut corners, but new, stiffer penalties against cheating, some that would ban a team from even competing, may make coaches and boosters think twice. After all, the saying, winning isn't everything, it's the only thing, could be updated to a losing team isn't everything, but it's better than no team at all. John Fricke, CNN Sports. A couple of updates for you. Bo Jackson does not have both touchdowns for Auburn. He set both of them up, but he let his roommate, Tom Agee, go into the end zone for the two scores. Georgia Tech has defeated North Carolina State 28-18. For an update on the game between Michigan State and Arizona State, let's go to East Lansing, Michigan with Pete Van Weeren and Ron Kramer. Pete Van Weer and Ron Kramer with you from Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan, where with four minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the game, the Spartans have a 9-3 lead over Arizona State. Arizona State just fumbled. Michigan State, second down, 13 yards to go. They're on the Arizona State 30. Lorenzo White has rushed for over 170 yards in the game. A new Michigan State record. He's got it again, but he's going to be dropped for a loss again. Scott Steven along with number five, Jimmy Reynosa. 
over to make the stop for the Sun Devils. The Sun Devils here in the second half are really fierce defensively. Salamua doing a great job at that nose guard. Third down and 16. Michigan State so far has not taken advantage of the turnover by Arizona State. In the second half, we have had a lot of turnovers. We have had a lot of penalties. And Michigan State hoping to maintain the lead. It is incomplete. Dave Yarema's pass. Intended for number 21, Bobby Morris. He overthrew him. Not a very good second half for Dave Yarema. Morris was open in the middle. Overthrew him. I think they're going to go for a field goal. It's going to be probably a 50-yarder. Chris Caudell, who's trying to fill the big shoes of Ralph Mosienko. 49 yards. He has kicked one field goal today of 31 yards, but he has also missed an extra point. This one wouldn't be long last year for Ralph Mosienko. A 49-yard attempt for Chris Caudell. from Kentucky. And this crowd's just wild here. I heard a few boos and a few hisses, but I'll tell you what, they changed their mind very quickly when Caudell got it through the uprights for three points. A very frustrating second half for John Cooper's Sun Devils. So many times in this half, the Sun Devils have been threatening to get back in it. Well, they're still not all of it because there's three minutes and 32 seconds left. And you know doggone good and well that Jeff Van Rapport can throw the ball. He's had some great games in the past, over 500 yards. So let's not count those Arizona Blue Devils, I mean, uh, Sun Devils out. Here's the kick. And so Michigan State leading by a score of 12 to three with three and a half minutes remaining in the ball game. Michigan State on the scoreboard with a Lorenzo White 42-yard run in the first quarter. Chris Caudell, a 31-yard field goal, and now a 49-yard field goal. Thank you, gentlemen, for letting us join you. And Kevin Christopher, of course, will update that game for you on the scoreboard shows at 420 and 455. Georgia Tech, as we mentioned, off to its highest, score, highest scoring start since 1966. The Texters put on 28 points in the scoreboard, but Bill Curry was worried early. Here's why. North Carolina State with the ball. Eric Kramer to Haywood Jeffries. Nice play for the touchdown. State goes up 7-0. But Georgia Tech came right back. John Dewberry, the quarterback, goes wide, finds Gary Lee. And the game was tied at seven. He was wide open, as you see, in the end zone. 45 seconds before the half. This ball is picked off by Mark Hogan. And he returns it to the 24-yard line, where three plays later on third and 10 from the 24. Dewberry goes to the air again. Tim Mannion open, goes into the end zone. 28 to 18 was the final. And Georgia Tech over North Carolina State. Also, an update for you, Northwestern is leading Missouri now 14 to nothing. Stanley Davenport running wild for the Wildcats. Still early. Still, Still early. early? Yeah. I thought Northwestern would do pretty well against Duke last week, but they lost 40 to 17. Missouri favored in this ballgame by 25 points under new coach Woody Weidenhofer. Uh, Bill Curry's uh, Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, uh, that John Dewberry, and you saw uh, him on film just a minute ago, he is the success or the failure of the, of the Georgia Tech team this year. They're a strong offensive unit, and he makes it go. But without him, well, they have a real drop-off after that. Defensively, they look much improved. Pat Swilling, a defensive end, is as good as I've seen. Bill Curry's has re he's recruited excellently. He really has. He's done a, a fine job. And he's just now getting to the point where he can be competitive with anybody and challenge for that uh, uh, ACC. Big, tough, uh, close game for you between Clemson and Virginia Tech. Clemson has won it on a last-second field goal. The final was 20-17. to 17. We look forward tonight for Pittsburgh.
to be taking on Ohio State. Sometimes a team can let an injury work to their advantage by everybody else pulling together, trying to make up the slack for Keith Byers. Well, it will be. It, it can work that way, and I hope it does for them, too. But you know Bowers has eaten his heart out over Bo Jackson running uh, roughshod over, uh, what did you have, over 100 yards today? So he's right now 390 yards behind that we know of. Most of you uh, on Turner Network Television will be seeing the Atlanta Braves against the San Francisco Giants at 5 o'clock. We'll have scoreboard and update sh uh, shows for you throughout the afternoon. And, of course, tonight, Pittsburgh, Ohio State. I'm Craig Sager for Alec Hawkins. Thanks for being with us. This is Turner Network Television. The Redman Football Action Report was brought to you by Redman Chewing Tobacco. The Redman Reaction is satisfaction. We have had the toss of the coin, and the Buckeyes of Ohio State have won the toss that they have elected to receive. This is a split crew of officials that we have here tonight from the Big Ten and the CIFOR, which is the Northern Independents. This is the first time that the Buckeyes have ever played a game starting at night here at Ohio Stadium. This is one of the shrines of college football, of course, packed and jammed. This is football fever country, and it's the Pitt Panthers against the Buckeyes of Ohio State. I tell you, we mentioned a little at the top of the show as we take a look at the officials there, the referee, John Mellon, David Hicks, Bob Colburn, George Cullen, Joe Brimeyer, George Solomon, and Tom Aver. Herbert. So we'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. And so now it will be Ohio State receiving. Pitt will be kicking off. It'll be Pat Byancourt. Just as soon as they break into formation to kick it off, there is the series, the 20th meeting. It's Dino Dawson back there on the kickoff. One uh, fast young man from Detroit, Michigan, Lindsay. He's at, the, he's at the top up there. He can really, really fly. And Workman is back there with him as well, and that's fine, Court. Dawson and Workman are the deep men. Ryan Court's a junior from Parma, Ohio. Ball is in the air. Taken by Dawson, two yards deep in the end zone. He comes out to the five, to the 10, and stops at the 12-yard line. So that is where the Buckeyes of Ohio State will start first down and 10 yards to go at their 12-yard line. Here is the offensive alignment now. Arsados is the quarterback. Woldridge, of course, in place of Byers in there at the tailback. Cooper starting at fullback. Lanise is at flanker. Chris Carter, great receiver, is at the split end. There are the interior linemen, and Ed Taggart is the tight end for the Buckeyes of Ohio State. They have Lanise far to the right side. They have set Carter in the slot right. Arsados is the quarterback waiting for the snap. Gives it off to his fullback, Cooper. Cooper hits in there and gets across the 15 out to the 17-yard line for five. It'll be second down and five yards to go. Steve Apke made the tackle for Pitt. Now here's the defensive alignment for Pittsburgh. Starting with the five-man line there. Those are the linebackers, Lavinia and uh, Apke. And those are the deep backs. Second down and five yards to go out there. At the 17-yard line for the Buckeyes, coached by Earl Bruce. Cooper and Wildridge are in the eye formation. Wildridge on his first carry of the night. Plows out to the 20-yard line. Picked up three, so it's going to be third down and about two yards to go. It was Johnson in there on the tackle. Yep. For Pittsburgh. Our state offense going right at that five-man front of Pittsburgh. Two straight runs. Wildridge picking over for the great Keith Byers at tailback. Little short, going to bring up third and two, two and a half. Spotted it short at the 20 yard line. Again, they have Lanise coming far to the right side. They have got Carter out to the left side this time. Third and very short. Casadas the quarterback. Casadas back to throw up the middle and it's completed. Taken across the 30 and down to the 40 and across the 40 yard line. And it was the tight end Taggart 
That gets the tight end, 24 yards on the pickup. Well, third and two and a half, and this is what you never saw at Ohio State seven or eight years ago, and they changed a little play action over the middle. Big tight end makes his first catch, and Taggart picks up 22 yards, and the first down moves the football up past the 40. There was a time when they used to say that Ohio State football under Woody Hayes was three yards in a cloud of dust. They were winning at that time nonetheless. Those days are gone forever. It's quite different now. They throw the football around, and they have a first down and 10 yards to go at the 43-yard line. But Cooper got the ball and was slapped down because there was a collision right there. Bukowski was right there and uh, made the hit. Oh, a real fine defensive play by the defensive tackle. Watch the penetration on the right side of your screen. Nobody missed the block completely. That's Bob Buskowski, 6'5", 265 pounds. Missed assignment offensively. Buskowski got great penetration. Second down and 11 yards to go for the Buckeyes with Lanise coming far to the right side and Carter in the slot right. Cooper and Woolridge in the eye and back to throw now. Casadas. And the dive made up that the 50-yard line by Lanise, and he got it. Lanise pulled it in at the 50. Yeah. Good move by the defensive safety back there. I think it was Washington. Troy Washington almost comes up with an interception here. It was just a good, strong arm by Corsadas makes this completion. There's number one, Mike Lanise. He catches it. You saw the safety man come almost very, very close to getting an interception. They're down in three yards to go with the ball out there. Well, like, actually across the 49-yard line now. This time they send Lanise to the left side. Running back still in high formation for Casadas of Ohio State. Cooper and Woldridge in the eye formation. Woldridge has got the football. And Woldridge is looking for the first down. Flying in there through the 46-yard line. And they'll take a long look now to see if he got it. He's very, very close. I think he got it. Looks like they're favoring that left side uh, here early the first quarter, Lindsey, right behind Rory Graves, the big left tackle for Ohio State. He's 6'6", 280. We get a look at Earl Bruce on the sideline. Pretty good record there, coaching 102 wins, 50 losses. He's in his seventh season here at Ohio State, having followed Woody Hayes. Last tackle was made by Apke and Bukowski. Going to be first down and 10 yards to go, and the ball is at the 46-yard line of the Pitt Panthers. This is his slot offense, Lindsey, over there, where they put all the speed on the left side. Casadas rolling and looking and winding up and throwing deep and it is that an incomplete down there at the three yard line. It was Lewis, John Lewis, number four, who batted it down. It's intended for probably the best receiver they've ever had here at Ohio State. You get a look at him right here. Chris Carter, sophomore from Middleton, Middletown. Double covered back here. Beautiful move by John Lewis, number four, bats it down incomplete. Carter caught eight touchdown passes last year as a freshman, Lindsey. He's rated as the best uh, wide receiver they've ever had here. Boj Fazio, head coach of the Pittsburgh Panthers. Dawson is in the ballgame now, and Lanise is out of the wide receiver. Freeman to the right side, Woldridge carrying it. He gets across the 45, down to about the 43-yard line. Woods made the tackle. <laughs> Looks up about three on the play. Wooldridge, of course, playing in place of Keith Fires. It isn't as though you had a brand new man playing that position because Wooldridge is something of a veteran. He started before himself, an outstanding football player. And at uh, practice yesterday, we were asking for comparisons of the two. They both are very talented, Byers and Wooldridge. Wide receivers left and right. Casadas. Complete. Dino Dawson. And it got away there. Incomplete, the officials say simply incomplete. Uh, he was popped loose from that football. Looks like he caught it there for a minute, but he didn't have it long enough. We'll take another look. Versadis right on the right on the money. Looks like he's got a hold of the football there, but he coughs it up. One referee right down on the action. It looks like he's got it, but he doesn't have control from the vantage point here. With his back to us, looks like he had the football in. It could have been called either way. Tom Trooper is back to do the punting now. One of the really fine punters in the country. Darrell Austin has dropped back to receive it from Pittsburgh, standing on his own 10-yard line. He led the nation last year in one category. Trooper puts it up, angling it for the corner. Look at this kick. 
Yeah. And it's a touchback. It'll be brought out to the 20 yard line and put in play first down and 10 yards to go. That kick almost went out of bounds at the one yard line. Tuber thought he had it. A 43 yard punt. We'll be back in a moment. This is Turner Network Television. <laughs> The Pitt Panthers have the football now. Their quarterback is John Conjimmy. Conjimmy brings him up first down, 10 yards to go. They have the ball at their own 20. There is no score. The game has just begun here in Columbus, Ohio. Here's the doctor, his fullback on the first play, and that's Tom Brown. And Tom Brown is popped down there by Kulik, who is in the middle, and Henry Brown. Here's the offensive alignment now for Pitt. And Jimmy is the quarterback. Brown and Gladman are in the eye formation. Scales and Stinnett are wide receivers. The interior alignment and Clint Wilson is the tight end. It is second down and nine yards to go. Ball is at the 21 yard line. Wide receivers left and right for and Jimmy. Motion across. And Jimmy has the football. And he completes it up across the 30. It's a first down and 10 yards to go. Taken by Charles Gladman. Going to the tailback Gladman for 12 yards. Hold up. Check that, Lindsay. That was Chuck Scales, the flanker, on a little turn-in pattern over there. Chuck Scales had a father played in the NFL for five years. Charles Scales, if you remember him, played with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Cleveland. Scales, the youngster here, caught three passes, one for a touchdown last two weeks ago against Purdue. He's a good one. You've seen the defensive alignment of the Ohio State Buckeyes. There's motion across. Then it's going across, and they give it to the tailback this time. That's Gladman. Gladman across the 40 and still moving to the 45-yard line. Ooh, good run that time. Gladman 30. stuck his nose in there, picked up 13 yards over the middle, and he likes it. 13-yard pickup. Take another look here, Lindsay. Watch this. He goes up and over. Pretty good blocking up front. Good standoff blocks by that offensive lineman. As Gladman picks up the first down. Barry White and Rogan made the tackle. That, just that everybody cont uh, contained at the point of attack, Lindsay, and good running back Gladman. Gladman and Brown in the I formation now. And Jimmy rolling and looking and throwing back and complete. Taking across the 50-yard line and down to the 45-yard line. Yeah, we can see if uh, when Jimmy gets in trouble, he's going to look back. Gladman After the play him. action, Lindsay, running out, we'll probably get another look at it right here. Now watch, after the fake, after the fake to Brown, when Jimmy runs out around, everybody's covered, so he comes back to his safety man back over the middle. He's wide open. That's 32, Charles Gladman. First down. And 10 yards to go at the Ohio State 45-yard line. That is Stinnett across, 24, and Jimmy with the football. And he is swarmed at the 45 for no game. Johnson there on first contact. And so now let's go to the studio for a highlight. This is Alabama with a ball in his first possession. Quarterback Mike Shula making the signals, pitches to Chester Bragg. He goes wide for the touchdown. Alabama on top of A&M, 7 to nothing. Back to Paul and Lindsey. The Crimson Tide out in front, and right here there is no score, and it's second down, 10 yards to go for the Pitt Panthers at the Ohio State 45-yard line. Stewart in motion across, and Jimmy swinging it out to Gladman, and he goes out of bounds. It'll be at about the 42-yard line. Johnson popping out over there. Gladman number 32, the tailback. Pepper Johnson in the last couple of plays. 6'3", 252 pounds. Great size linebackers. We get a look at Jimmy. 1984 stats. 1,100 yards, seven interceptions, nine TDs. Of course, this Pittsburgh team was decimated by injuries last year. Lost seven ball games. They were a better team than that. But they just had to cut it up to go on with it. Big third down play here. Third and about seven. As crowd is alert to that situation. Packed house. It is that. It always is here. And Jimmy completes it. And it's taken down inside the 35-yard line, taken by Tom Brown. Well, they've got such active linebackers, Lindsay. They get past in the pass, pass defense. They've got those five linebackers, and they're going back a little bit too deep. So then Jimmy's after the play action, is coming back up the middle. Little delays over the middle, and they're wide open. This was to Tom Brown, the big fullback. Junior, 225 pounds, and he's got the first down. 
So Tom Brown was the recipient, and Spielman made the tackle. It's first down and 10 yards to go at the 33-yard line of Ohio State. Stewart in motion across. Gave it to Brown, and uh, he got to the 31-yard line for two. That'll be second down and eight yards to go. Spielman was in there to make the tackle, and he's a good one. Oh, what a quick move. Chris Spielman, the sophomore from Massillon, Ohio. And I think everybody in the country realizes what a hotbed that Massillon, Ohio is for football. Great college foot, uh, high school football at Massillon, some great names. And, of course, Chris Spielman, All-American in high school. They say around here, as I said earlier, he's the most intense football player in the history of this school. So, Lindsay, he's got to love to play this game. You bet. Chuck Scales is in the wide love. It's extended in motion across. Flex and Jimmy throwing over the middle and completed it. It'll be marked at about the 27-yard line. Just about the 27. It's the tight end, Trent Wilson. And it was Terry White on the tackle. Well, Coach, it's Chuck Stobert, of course, the offensive coordinator of Pitt. I think he's got an automatic. When he sees that blitz, he's going to go to the tight end, Lindsey. It looks like Jimmy picked up the blitz right away and uh, means it's an automatic to the tight end. Of course, the tight end has to be alert because it's an automatic pattern when he picks it up. Again, third down. Third down and four yards to go at the 27-yard line of Ohio State. Stewart in motion across. And the fullback is... Brown, who was trying to pick it up, he got in at about the 23-yard line. He's close. Gummerall made the tackle. He is close. He's very close. They take a long look at this one. Take another look at Tom Brown here out of the eye. They give it to the man up. Little trap blocking up front. Brown slides to the outside. He's hit by Eric Gummerall. And it's a first down for the Pitt Panthers. A very impressive drive with their first chance at the football, Lindsay. This Pitt Panther team keeping the pressure on that Ohio State defense. First and 10 at the 23-yard line. And Jimmy, the quarterback. <laughs> what a hold. It's his tailback right and Bradman. Bradman fumbled the football and it is recovered by Ohio State, I think. Inside the 10-yard line, they get him unstacked there. Well, Charles Glam was trying to get that extra yard, as all good backs will, Lindsay. He was really churning those legs. It was White who got it. Mr. William White, a sophomore, 5'10", 186. Watch Gladman here. This is a great piece of running. He really gets popped, and the ball comes free, and William White's got it for Ohio State. Look at that hit by number 12, Terry White. And William White gets it. So the ball is on the eight-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go for the Buckeyes of Ohio State. There is no score We're in the first quarter. Ohio State has the ball. That's all the quarterback. Here's the Wildridge. Wildridge out across the 10, just across the 10 for about two, making second down and eight yards to go. We have five minutes, 25 seconds remaining to be played. And the first quarter here at Ohio Stadium. We'll take a look at Earl Blues. I'm sure he'd naturally love to have Keith Byers in this offensive team. You know, the tailbacks last year almost averaged six yards a pop between the two of them. Wildridge actually averaged 5.9 yards every time he touched the football last year. John Hutchison's in that tight end now. Wilders again. Wilders is running around to the 20 and across the 25 first and 10 at the 26 yard line for the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Well you're talking about uh, blocking on the left side again they're going right over left tackle Roy Graves had a big hole opened up. Take another look end zone shot nice cut here. John Wildridge 15 yard pickup. Lewis made the tackle. Spotted at the 25-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go. Lanise coming out of the huddle to a wide right now. A fullback taking the ball on the handoff there. Cooper carrying. And it was Johnson. Wall Johnson in to make the tackle out there at the 29-yard line. Again, a four on the play makes it second down and six. Errol Bruce, who was at Iowa State before coming here. As coach, George Cooper carried on the last play of the fullback. Well, he didn't carry uh, too many times last year. He's going to get a lot more carries this year. He's a load, I'll tell you, 6'2", 240 pounds, and that up back, and a good blocker, of course. You better be. you got to be a good blocker to play that up back here. 
Now the ball loose, but uh, recovered quickly. Still lost the yard or so. Rosado's got it uh, himself. Loss of a yard, so it's back there now to the 29 yard line. Well, they're happy with this young man, Corsadas. He's got the strong arm. He lost 16 pounds from last year. They say he's moving around a lot, lot better. Makes him a little bit quicker. Ed Taggart comes back in now at uh, the tight end position. It is third down. And five yards to go. Corsadas throwing. Carter. And Carter's got it right there at the 45-yard line. The man who had such a big day in the Rose Bowl last year, breaking a record for yardage on reception set in 1935 by Don Hudson. He was a pretty fair end, too, wasn't he? He was. <laughs> Chris Carter, his first catch of the year, a little sideline pattern. Boy, when he's got that much speed, you see John Lewis over there. Carter caught 41 last year, eight touchdowns. John Lewis is going to have his hands full, Lindsay. You've got to play off of him. And if you're going to cover him, you've got to double cover him. You've got to play him short and long. No one man's going to play him tight. He'll run right by you. Carter left and Lanise right. And there's the penalty marker thrown. Box says three minutes, 17 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. Cost him five. Versada's three out of five now for 49. Dead ball, illegal procedure, offense, still first down. Dead ball foul, you'll see some movement. There he is, right tackle, number 72, Larry Cotterman. Small young man, 6'7", 282. First and 15, Carsadas the quarterback. In the eye formation, Wooldridge the tailback and George Cooper is the fullback. Lenise to the right side, Carter to the left side. And the Ohio State alignment. Woodridge. Stopped at the 38-yard line by Bukowski. Oh, what a play by Bukowski. He just took the blocker, knocked him right back into the running back. They lost two yards. Watch Bukowski now, 95. He just shoves the guard right back into the running back. And it knocks Woodridge down. Great play. Second and 17. The clock is running there now with two minutes, 50 seconds left to play in the first quarter at Packed and Jammed Ohio State. Lanise comes out of the huddle far to the right side. Running back to the nine formation. Marcus Adas. Gathered in in advance of the 45-yard line by Carter. A little bumping going on there. And uh, Callahan it was who made the hit. Picked up eight yards. That was Quentin Jones uh, and Carter exchanging a few words. Off the play action, Hersadis, right on the money. What good hands this young man has from Middletown, Ohio. He's got great size, Lindsay, and great speed. 6'3", 192 pounds. He's the, just the perfect prototype for a split receiver. They're down at nine yards to go with the ball at Ohio State, 46 in their possession. Rosadas arches it up there to Carter, incomplete. Getting over there to cover on the play was John Lewis. Corner back on that side for Pitt. Uh, good, good quickness that time by John Lewis. Actually, it looked like Carter had him beaten, but the ball just wasn't uh, thrown deep enough, Lindsay. We've got a beautiful ISO here. You'll see a defensive back against a receiver. See the little move? Now, it looks like Carter's got his man beaten, but... John Lewis is playing the football, as all good defensive people see. He saw the football. He came up, got a hand on it, knocked it down. Austin is back deep to receive Tupa's punt. As a freshman last year, Tom Tupa had the best punting stats of any Ohio State punter ever. He averaged 47.1 and led the nation with a net average of 44.1. Look at this kid. Craig cut signal goes up. They let it go, and it's into the end zone. Touchback across the end line. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. 54-yard punt this time. And so there still is no score. We have one minute, 45 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Ohio State and Pittsburgh coming to you tonight on Turner Broadcasting, home of the 1986 Goodwill Games. Opening ceremony is July 5th, 1986 from Moscow. The Pitt Panthers have the ball now in this game that's scoreless to this point. First and at the room, 21 yard line, 20 yard line. And Jimmy is the quarterback. Is it to Gladman? 
Gladwin got a yard, and that is all he got as he stopped at the 21-yard line by Camaro and Spielman. Now we take a look at this unusual defense. Now we see Larry Kolick. You see him right there down the middle, 33. He's usually a linebacker. He also plays middle guard. He goes down in a three-point stance on some plays, and he also stands up uh, in a two-point stance, Lindsay, and, and becomes three linebackers right in the middle of that defense. Very unusual. Second down and nine yards to go for the Panthers. Clock is running with one minute, 10 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. There is no score. Ken Gladman's got the ball, and he gets it out there to the 23-yard line, and he got away for the moment. Drew a big crowd there at the 23. Johnson was there, and Lee was there. One thing defenses in college football have become more proficient at, we take a look at the linebackers, is you'll see a lot more defenses in college go for the football now. They try to tackle that football. When they get a running back hung up, the extra man always goes for the football. You take a look at Pepper Johnson there, almost trying to strip that football away. Third and seven at the 23-yard line. Third down play. From Jimmy. And Jimmy's got it. The quarterback faked it to Gladman and was running for the sticks, trying to get the first down, and he may have got it. Beautiful move by Jimmy. He's four out of four tonight. We mentioned at the top he's going to have to have an outstanding night if Pitt's going to be successful. He started beautiful against Purdue, and he's picking up where he left off. Look at Jimmy around the outside. Six foot, 185 pounds, and got some good moves, and he barely got the first down. He knew where the sticks were, and he just got there, and he got out. So it is uh, first and 10 at the 30-yard line. 26 seconds on the clock. Tom Brown carried the football, and Kolick was there to make the tackle. Well, what a big day for the Big Ten. They went undefeated, they, Lindsay. Every team in the Big Ten has won so far. Absolutely. A big, How about big Northwestern day. over Missouri? That was the big one, right? That's something. Well, they spotted out there on the 31-yard line. Indiana beat my team, Louisville. Yes, indeed. Louisville Cardinals of Howard Schnellenberger. Time has run out, so that's the end of the first quarter, and the score is Pittsburgh nothing, Ohio State nothing, and this is Turner Network Television. Portions of tonight's game are brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealer. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buicks. Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning at Ohio State University. Pittsburgh has the ball second and eighth. They have it at their own 32. There is no score in the game. Can Jimmy is the quarterback. He's got the football still, and he passes up across the 45-yard line, and a leaping catch is made there in the stack. Lee was there to make the hit. It was Wilson who made the catch. 14-yard pickup to his big tight end, Clint Wilson. He caught three passes against Purdue, one for a touch. to we'll take a look. They're in a slot situation over the left side. Watch the pattern develop. Outside man comes in. That's Chuck Scales on the turn, and he's open, too. He's got two men open. So Jimmy goes wisely back to the tight end for 14 yards. First and 10 at the 46-yard line. Fullback's got it this time going to the 50-yard line. Tom Brown, Gehring. Picked up four yards. It'll be second down and six, and Chris Spielman made the tackle for Ohio State. There are the stats for the first quarter of this football game. Right on the button, 88 yards for Pitt, Ohio State, 87 yards. Looked like Pittsburgh was going in in the first quarter and caught up the football inside the 10-yard line. And that's the biggest turnover so far. Second down play coming here, seven yards to go for the Pitt Panthers. Send it in motion across. Give it to the tailback. And it is taken by Gladman before Johnson pulls him down at the 46-yard line. For all the stations down the line that missed commercial position number five, let us say we'll make that up later in the ballgame. Little business on the side. Yep. And that's, folks, because these teams have ran the football. We haven't had too many penalties. They've eaten up a lot of clock. And it's continuous action here in Columbus, Ohio. Third down and two yards to go here. Pittsburgh in possession. Gladman again. Gladman got the first down to the 41-yard line. White pulled him down. Oh, <laughs> did he pull him down? Terry White came up from his weak side safety position and really made a good contact out of the eye. Watch Gladman, of course, with those good balance. 
Watch his hit. Number 12, that's, that's the way you teach it. Put his head right in the numbers. Terry White. So the Panthers are driving here. They're in Ohio State territory. And Jimmy, and Jimmy, and he couldn't get away from Bauer and Lee. Looked here, looked there, and Lee was both places. Well, Chuck Stobert, the offensive coordinator of Pittsburgh, thinks Lee's their best linebacker, and we get a look at him. Number 82, Byron Lee, the senior. Somebody missed the blocking assignment completely. It'll be second down and about 16 yards to go now. Pittsburgh opened up with an exciting victory in their opener against Purdue. They won it 31 to 30. This is the opening game of the season for Ohio State here at Ohio Stadium. Second down and 16 yards to go. And Jimmy. And it's complete to Brown, the fullback, and he's at the 40-yard line. It'll be uh, about nine to go for the first down still. Chris Spielman made the tackle. Third down play coming here. And Jimmy, six feet tall, 185-pounder. And he's perfect so far, Lindsay. Six for six for 56 yards here first half. Third and nine at the 40. He's from Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. And Coach Fazio told Lindsey and I this morning that he's going to win. He's going to have a good season. It's going to rest on that young man's shoulder right there. John from Jimmy. He's got to have a great year from him. Third and nine. Big play. And Jimmy has the football. In his hands and out. Incomplete. He was a little bit behind him, Lindsey, but it was catchable. That's Chuck Scales over there. He was wide open, and for Jimmy picks him up pretty good. I'll tell you, he looks the field over. He's got good composure. As we see, number 22, Chuck Scales, go in motion, comes back on the inside of the slot. Now, we follow him downfield. He makes a good cut to the open field here, Lindsey. He just comes all the way over towards the sidelines, and he was, he was stopped, uh, and he had balance. He should have had that football. Ruderson is back to do the punting now. Terry White is back there deep for Ohio State. Going to hit it to five, go into the end zone, across the end line, touchback, first and ten at the 20-yard line, a 40-yard punt. So there still is no score. We're in the second quarter. Pittsburgh nothing, Ohio State nothing, and we'll be back in just a moment. First down and ten yards to go now, and the ball is at the 20-yard line. As you look at the scoreboard here at Ohio State. Rodrich guy. Now to go outside, it was stopped for no gain at the 20-yard line. It'll be second down and 10. I tell you, strong side safety really plays that sweep good for the Pittsburgh Panthers. We can look at Old Old Fazio over the sidelines. Bill Callahan came up from his safety position really turned that sweep in actually made the stop there's uh, the pit record Ohio State of course has also had uh, similar statistics they have won or tied for the Big Ten championship 24 times here's the pass play over the middle and complete however on the slip it'll only go for two or three yards I think Wilders may be a little bit too anxious here in the first quarter Lindsay he slipped down three times he's lost his footing on this artificial turf you've got to run under control if you're going to make a cut uh, if this was natural turf he would i mean if it was natural grass would not have made that slip here's ohio state's uh, national record six times the last time 1968 that they won the national championship third down and seven yards to go for the buckeyes artist wide to the left side lanise is wide to the right side what a diving catch. catch across the 40-yard line by Lanise. Boy, Mike Lanise, a senior from Mayfield, Ohio, got great speed. Makes a sense. One-handed catch. Versada's picked up the open man beautiful. He, he's watching his wide receiver here. Makes a good move to the inside. He gets by the cornerback out there. Now watch this one-handed catch. Kept it off the ground, first down. Good for 18 yards on the play, so they have it at the 41-yard line. Nine minutes, 50 seconds remaining to be played in the first half, and there is no score. 
Gave it to his fullback and it was taken by Cooper from Wyandanche, New York. And Cooper got up there to the 43-yard line. Gain of two yards to make it second down and eight, and Johnson made the duck. Sometimes when I see that little belly series play that you uh, like to refer to in your old Tennessee days, <laughs> they stick it in the belly of that fullback. It looks like it's kind of a wasted play sometimes. You know, you just hand it off, it gets one or two yards. But what happens, it keeps the defense honest on the inside. It holds the linebackers there, and they, they have a sequence of plays off the same thing. All right, Casada's up there waiting for the snap now. Casada drops and looks, goes over the middle, and is taken up about the 48-yard line. Gathered in there for the tight end Taggart. A little short of first down. It's going to bring up third and short. We see Taggart catch his, make his second catch. Here's a linebacker play now. That's Steve Apke. Taggart hooks up in front of him. Steve at 19 tackles against Purdue. He led this man to defense. Third down and three yards to go. Ohio State with the ball at their own 48-yard line. Blitz. Wilditch with the ball, and he got only about a yard. Oh, they, everybody came. Fourth and two. Fourth and two. Now, wait a minute. Let's, Earl Bruce is going to dump. He's going to punt. Tom Tupper comes in to do the punting now. Larry Austin has dropped back to field it for Pittsburgh. Tupper is a quarterback in addition to uh, his punting capabilities. He is also a fine quarterback. Waiting for the snap. it a little bit, fair catch signal, and it is taken at the 16-yard line. So Pittsburgh will start first and 10 at the 16. There is no score in the first quarter. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. It'll be first down and 10 yards to go now for the Pitt Panthers. They'll have the ball at their own 16-yard line. We're here at Ohio Hello, Stadium. Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning. This has been the home of the Buckeyes since 1922. 90,000 here tonight, man. Not a seat in the house. Fullback kick the hand out, Tom Brown. Got only about a yard, and Brown, uh, yes, Henry Brown and Kulik made the tackle. It was uh, Darnell Stone who had just come in to pull back in place of Brown. I think one thing about Saturday football, Super Saturday here on WTBS, we enjoy these games, of course, but you think about Craig Sagers and Alec Hawkins back in that studio, land of control all day long. That's a long day, and boys, they do a nice job. Taken by Gladman. Got up there across the 20 and out to about the 24-yard line. Run down by Johnson. So it's going to be third down and eight yards to go. At the 24-yard line. And that fullback now is Anthony Brown. Wide to the left is Chuck Steele. Still it's in motion across. Get it to the fullback. It was taken by Darnell Stone. He got out there to the 27. Pretty good move here, I think, by Foch Fazio. He's got a set of fresh running backs in there. He's got good confidence. A big freshman, A.B. Brown, five foot ten and a half. He's not too tall, but he's a solid 215 pounds. And he wants to get a look. And Darnell Stones, he knows of him, of course, a senior 6'1", 215 pounds. They're measuring for the possible first down. And it is a first and ten. So the Panthers keep the drive alive. Out there at the 27-yard line. It looks like Chris Spielman has uh, turned his ankle, and he's hobbling over here on the sidelines. An intense young linebacker, Ohio State. He's out of there right now. And Jimmy's still in there, quarterback. Jordan motion across. And Jimmy. 
Drove up to the 32-yard line to pick up five on the play. It'll be second down and five yards to go. I tell you, very lucky here, a miscommunication. Somebody went the wrong way. We got a counter option, and the back went the wrong way. He went to his right, and Kajemi gets out there, Lindsay, and he says, where's my back? And he turns a three-yard loss into about a five-yard gain. The back went left, and Kojimi's running the option down the left side. Sometimes the plays that break down, you get the best effect. Motion across. Here to the fullback again. Taken by Stone, Darrell Stone. And it was Johnson who made the tackle. He got it up there to the 37-yard line. Another first down, first and 10. Darnell Stone on the carry. Welcome to the club, Earl. <laughs> okay, that little side view there, that's what happens to all of us if we don't run and exit. I know, Lindsay, you're in pretty good shape and you're not in that club, I know that. First down on 10 yards to go. And Jimmy Thrill completed up across the 45-yard line. Gordon coming in to make the tackle. That was Mr. Scales again. He comes back for the football nice here. He's covered pretty good by Sonny Gordon. The rover back are the strong safety. There's this little turning pattern. We've seen it a lot. Good tackle by Sonny Gordon. Second down play coming now. The ball spotted at the 44-yard line. And Jimmy, seven out of eight, Lindsay, for 62 yards. Here to the fullback again. Uh-oh. Scott Leach right there. Leach made the, the hit right there, and uh, it's at the 45-yard line. He's filling in for Chris Fieldman. We get a good look at Mr. Leach. 6'3", 225 pounds. He's linebacker of Ohio State. Very, very active. This will be a third down and about three yards to go. Ball is spotted squarely on the 45-yard line of the Panthers. Third down conversions there. And by the tailback. And moved up to the 48-yard line. Eric Kumaro, I think, had the big running back. Stopped short with the first down, but just that second effort. You see the time remaining, three minutes, 20 seconds. It is a first down and 10 yards to go. You got to look at that scoreboard, of course, and it has 9,600 light bulbs in it. One of the most outstanding scoreboards in college athletics, and the people who run it are Ed Cheatham and Steve Anderson, there Dale Freck, and Deborah Dickey. Is that a beauty or not? They really get the information up there, and they spend hours and hours and hours running that, and they do a great job of it here at Ohio State. First down and 10 yards to go at the 48-yard line. Still looking at Jimmy. It's batted and it's intercepted. What an interception. Come on. Lindsay, his height, six foot six, 237 pounds, the height of Eric Kumaro, and a great agility, and we're just talking about how these linebackers move around. This is a beautiful play by a linebacker. Eric Kumaro, after Kojimi, run fakes. He's running around to the left, watching Sticky's big paw up there. He really got hit after he threw the football, too. That's Pepper Johnson. There's that little tip drill that so many of these defensive coaches work. And there you see Eric Kumaro with his first interception of the year. Still no score on the ball game. So we'll be back in just a moment. If the Buckeyes of Ohio State are to make a move offensively in this half, it is now. We have two minutes, 53 seconds left to play. There is no score. First and 10, Ohio State at the pit 45-yard line. Garcados, the quarterback. Garcados, incomplete. He hit Woolridge. He could not hang on. Second and 10 at the 45-yard line. <laughs> there you are. There's all kinds in the stands here. They pack them in. This stadium seats 85,339 and stands up a few more. 
because they sell 1,000 standing room seats in addition to the capacity. And when he's packed and jammed like this, it's beautiful. And this is the first night game that they have ever started here. Excuse me, Lindsay. First night game, right? First one they ever started here. They finished one once before, but never started one. Washington was the defender there. 32 yard pickup, and there he is, number two. That's Chris Carter. He's a surefire All American, this young man. 41 catches last year, eight touchdowns. Look at this move. Everybody's to the outside. They just throw it up for grabs here. And he goes up and he gets the football, and he's got Troy Washington all over his back. Chris Carter on a sensational catch. Double covered as it was. First down and 10 yards to go, and the ball is at the 14-yard line. The Buckeyes are threatening here now. 2.29 on the clock in the first half. Ball is dropped, picked up. And Cursadas has finally swarmed under back there at the 17-yard line. Cursadas on a naked reverse that time. He's a little bootleg around the right side. He had an option to throw the football all by himself. Everybody comes left here. He's by himself, and he loses the football. Boy, he had some room on the outside, Lindsay. It could have been six. Second and 13. You see the clock running less than two minutes remaining. And the first half of this game, and there is no score. Big second down play coming. The crowd is alive at Ohio Stadium. Here comes the blitz. Posadas runs it complete inside the 15 and on down to the 13 yard line. Taken again by Carter. Callahan came in to make the tackle. Well, he only picked up three or four in that pitch to Carter that time. We take a look at the outside men here on the blitz. Carter's coming over on the right side, and he drills it in there, but he has to come back. And he only picked up about four. Third down and eight yards to go at the 12. Carter, last year as a freshman, had 41 catches, which is the most ever by a Buckeye freshman. Third and eight at the 12. Incomplete intended out there for Lanise. Make it fourth and eight. Yeah, they came with everything they had there. Put man-to-man -man coverage on their outside. Quentin Jones had Lanise man-to-man. Rich have, Spangler's coming in. Got to have confidence in him, Lindsay. He's very quick. Spangler's 14 out of 19 in the field goal department last year. He can boot them, and uh, the Ohio State Buckeyes are making a bid to get on the scoreboard with one minute, one second left in the half. And look here, he's a straight-on kicker. Straight-on kicker, and it's going to be a 29-yard attempt. Very unusual. And East is holding. Spangler from the hash mark left, boots it up, and it is good. It's good, and the Buckeyes of Ohio State have three points on the board. They lead 3-0 with 56 seconds left to play in the half, and we'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. Coming up at halftime, then and now, Woody Hayes, the Buckeye Marching Band, and it's a great one. The studio report to bring you up to date on all the football information and first half highlights, so we hope you'll stay with us during halftime. And boy, I tell you, when Lindsay mentions that band, they raise the roof when they march in here. It was a sensational opening. A great, great band, folks, and don't miss this band at halftime. They are sensational. Over 200 strong. Keith Tensley is deep as Spangler boots the football. It is taken at the two-yard line. We come to the five, to the 10, to the 15, and out to about the 17, 18-yard line. Tensley was the man who returned it. So it'll be first and ten there. Ohio State leading by a score of three to nothing. Leach made the tackle on a kickoff return. There is time remaining, 52 seconds in the first half. John Kinsemi quarterbacking the Pitt Panthers. Gladman and Brown. Gladman has the football and he got to the 21 yard line with it. A gain of four yards to make it second down and six. Camaro made the tackle. Ready. 
Clock continues to run with 35 seconds showing now to be played in the first half. Oh, a very quick first half here. Well, they're either keeping the ball on the ground or Absolutely. completing passes. One of the two. Both quarterbacks, high percentage of completions. Good running attack by both teams. A little bit better by Pittsburgh, of course. And Jimmy Davis, stay back again. The whistle stops play as the flag was thrown. That was Gladman carrying. Illegal procedure. Final score, BYU 17, Washington 3. Puts the ball back to the 15. Dead ball. Ball start. Still second down. Second and 13. Ball's on the 15-yard line. Time is running, and it is run out. So time has run out here. And at the end of the first half, the score is Ohio State 3 and Pittsburgh nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. Anthony Brown on the five-yard line and back to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. And stretches his body out to the 25-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go. So the Pitt Panthers trailing by three have the football. Key made the tackle. By Steve. John Kanjimi is the quarterback. And Reggie, I'm sure Coach Fazio at halftime said, look, boys, we don't have to change anything. I think we outplayed Ohio State in the first, first half. We were down there at the seven-yard line. If it had been over that turnover, we'd been leading this football game. So let's go out, do the same things offensively, the game plans there, and just go hard head-to-head -head with them. Tom Brown, the fullback. Charles Gladman is the tailback. In the eye formation, that's Gladman with the football. And he goes out uh, at about the 26-yard line. Leach was there on the tackle. Second down and nine yards to go. There is the backfield and receivers for the Pitt Panthers. Same as uh, people started. Clint, what, Clint Wilson is the tight end, and there's the interior lineman. Second down and nine yards to go for Pitt. Gales is in a wide left. Jimmy, screen left. Gladman with the football, 30. Goes out of bounds at the 33-yard line. All right, there's a flag down. Unnecessary roughness may be called over on the sideline. Gladman got hit maybe a little unnecessarily over there. He really set up the block well going to the outside. That's exactly what it is, and necessary roughness, Lindsay, against personal, the Buckeyes. Personal foul call as he was right in a bunch of Buckeyes at their bench, as a matter of fact. Now watch him set up this screen, and uh, Jimmy looks it off to the right, comes back over the left. Now watch Gladman set up the blocks. He cuts inside and then makes a cut to the outside, set up the block by number 58, Barry Pettigrew on the center. Foul. Now here comes the personal First foul. Down. First down and 10 yards to go. The ball is at the 48-yard line, Pitt in possession. Double to the right side. And Jimmy with the ball. Blitz. And it's complete down inside the 20-yard line. Taken down there by Wilson. The tight end again has gone deep. It's first and 10 to the 15-yard line. Oh, a beautiful pitch back from Jimmy. I tell you, 36 yards on this big pitch to Clint Wilson, and they caught him in a blitz. Watch Wilson on the inside here. Out of the slot, he just beats his man, Sonny Gordon. The rover back, the strong safety, and he puts it right on the money. He finally gets hit after a 36-yard pickup, a beautiful pitch by Jimmy. Rogan and White made the tackle, and there is an injury there. That's the Wilson who made the catch. That's Matt Stennett, I beg your pardon. And he is getting attention from the training staff. And so we'll be back in just a moment. First and 10 at the 15 yard line now. Then Jimmy is waiting for the snap for Pitt. And it is off on movement straight ahead down to the 13 yard line. Leach came in to make the tackle as Gladman carried on the play. 
So they'll get him on Stockton spotted there. Coach Fazio along the sideline. Got that nickname as a youngster for his peculiar way of pronouncing fudge. <laughs> and so he got a lifelong nickname of Foge Fazio. I like his real name. Serafino Dante Fazio. <laughs> <laughs> and Earl Bruce, the head coach of the Buckeyes. Ball is at the 13 yard line, second and eight. Flex on Jimmy. Well, that one's incomplete. Third and eight. Good mobility by that quarterback right there. Because Jimmy got out of a lot of trouble. He's got the good quick feet. He had to spin out of trouble. And he avoided the sack. Uh, we see him already out of the way of the trouble. He just threw this in the way. Threw it down low. Didn't want to risk an interception there by William White. Third and eight at the 13-yard line. Ohio State leading by a score of three to nothing. Pittsburgh in possession. We're in the third quarter. Scales is going far to the right side. Stewart is far to the left side. Stenner went out of the ball game earlier under his own power. After he was shaken up. Stewart in motion across. Continue with the ball. As the pitch to Gladman. And he stopped at the 15 yard line. And he's Gordon. Sonny Gordon made the hit. Sonny Gordon on the first stop. He was the force man on this option right. Sonny Gordon, the rover back for Ohio State, comes up and trips up the running back. Here we see the option, the spin by the quarterback. Jimmy pitches it back to Gladman. Now watch number seven right there. Fourth Sonny and, Gordon. Fourth and ten, and so we're going to have a 32-yard field goal attempt now by Mark Basco, who is a sophomore. A 32-yarder with Jimmy holding. And that is no good. It is no good. And the score remains. Ohio State three. And Pittsburgh, nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. The Pitt Panthers have twice been down deep in Ohio State territory, and they have twice come away empty. The Buckeyes have the ball first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Versailles, the quarterback. Made it to his fullback and Cooper carried before Apke came in with the stop. And twice now Pittsburgh's been inside the 50 yard lines had not put any points on the board. So Ohio State pretty fortunate in that respect. It'll be second down and seven out at the 23 yard line. I thought he made that field goal and I think the holder from Jimmy thought he made it. He ran all the way down in the end zone to talk to the linesman back there. Moniz comes out to a wide right. Carter's in the wide left. Here's the Wilgridge, the tailback. He got a yard up to about the 24, so it's going to be third down and about six yards to go. Bukowski made the tackle. Well, this is a young offensive line, I think, is showing up for Ohio State, Lindsay. The defense for Pittsburgh is just stuffing everything right at the line of scrimmage. They're really getting penetration. And they're not giving the running backs for Ohio State too much room to maneuver. John Hutchison comes in at tight end now, and Ed Taggart comes out. Cotterman, Gilmore, and Zacharoff, three of them linemen for Ohio State, playing uh, the first game. Asadas. Well, there was a collision of receiver and defender, and there was a penalty marker on the play back uh, where the quarterback was at the time. Against Ohio State penalty. A holding, I think. It was a completed pass up to the 40-yard line. 15-yard pickup for the first down. It's going to be nullified. So they take it back to mark it off, and we'll hear from the referee. Got a back in motion on the offense. Still third down. I think Corsadas has got to throw the football, Lindsay. He was 9 out of 14 in the first half. 121 yards. They haven't had any success running the football at all. They've been stuck. He's got to go upstairs. He's got great speed in his receiver, Carter and Lanise. Third and 11. And he throws it. A diving catch up at the 33-yard line, which will be in advance of the six and make it a first down. Well, what, what a beautiful timing Garden. pattern. Corsadas was hit just as he released the football. I don't know how, how he got the football out there. Watch number two. That's Chris Carter. Now, when he makes his move, the ball is already on the way. A beautiful pitch by Corsadas that time. Now, watch the quarterback. He gets cream, Lindsay. He's back there. Watch this pitch. Right there, he's being hit. 
He's being hit by the pit defense right as he releases the football. Carter gathered it in for 15 yards in his first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Move now to the 35-yard line. I tell well, you, they've been, they've been stuffing everything, Lindsay. They've got to go upstairs. Everything's open up up there because I think they're too afraid of the speed on the outside. We take a look at the Pittsburgh offensive people getting a little coaching after coaching on the sideline. Dino Dawson has been shuttling in and out, and Dino is in there right now as Lanise comes off the field. It's going to be second down and about nine yards to go. Crowd is alive here at Ohio Stadium. Sados to the tight end incomplete, trying to get it to Taggart. Should have had it. Hey, they're putting a lot of heat on that quarterback. He's got to throw in a hurry. He picked out the best man, Lindsey. Taggart just couldn't hold on. Watch the heat. Here comes 95. It's Bob Bukowski again on the inside. And it was a tough catch. Would have been a good catch, but he had his hands up. Then he's come shuttling back into the next play on a third and nine. Casados is 10 for 16, 136 yards so far tonight. Jim Casados, the quarterback. He's got the ball. Driving Jackson at the 50-yard line. Pulled in there by Lanise. And Jones made the tackle. Quentin Jones. Yep. That'll open up the running attack too, Lindsay. If he keeps throwing the football. Look at the lot of room they're giving number one. That's Mike Lanise, and that's exactly what Marsadis has got to take advantage of. Lanise's is third catch of the night. But given those receivers so much room on the outside, you might as well keep going upstairs. Lanise goes wide to the left side in this uh, first down and 10 yards to go at the 50-yard line. Marsadis is scrambling for it. I think Ohio State recovered it, and that's probably the side as we got on it. I tell you, penetration by that Pittsburgh defense has been outstanding tonight. We're talking about throwing the football. Carter and Lanise have been open on the outside. Carter's caught five, and Lanise has caught three. And watch this Pittsburgh defense just stuff it. That's 45. Matt Lavinia really caused havoc in that with that penetration there. Second down and 13. We're in the third quarter, 9.22 remaining to be played in this quarter. The Buckeyes are leading by a score of three to nothing. Casadas, and it is complete to Cooper, and Cooper goes to the 40-yard line. He's ridden out of bounds. He'll check this for a probable first down. He picked up 13 yards. They needed 13 yards. And I think he's got the first down, and you hear this tremendous crowd here at Ohio State. Hunter, coop, coop, coop. Off of play action, they take the little off tackle to the left and a good pitch by Corsadis. Watch this determination, Lindsay, as he drags three Pittsburgh defenders for the first down. He nope, did, didn't make the first didn't down. Didn't make the first down, just a little short, about four inches. Shade short, it'll be third down at the 40-yard line. Give it back to him right now. He's pumped up. Cooper is the fullback. Wildridge has the ball. And I think he got the first, he did. First and 10. And that will be at the 39-yard line of Pittsburgh. John Carter made the tackle. Coach Boge Fazio. Big day in football and Illinois. How about this? 21 17. Ooh, that's a tough ball game for Illinois. They're having their problems in the third quarter. Thank you for Grambling leading 10 0. Murray State leading 20 17 over Memphis State. And that's a halftime score. And right here, Ohio State's leading 3 0. First down, 10 yards to go. Going again to Cooper. Okay, you can hear that leather pop all the way up here. Got two yards. It'll be second and eight. The hit was made by Lavinia. Buckeyes are in pit territory, leading by a score of 3 nothing. That's Bruce's record. Getting a little pacing down along the sideline. Got us. 
intercepted at the 22-yard line. Return to the 40-45, and out of bounds at about the 50-yard line. Austin. That was the nickelback, Lindsay. The nickelback, Terrell Austin, number 19, comes in, makes a beautiful interception. And again, there was heat on the quarterback. Watch Corsadas right there. As he was trying to throw the football, I think he got hit from behind. And here comes the nickelback, number 19, Terrell Austin, for a beautiful interception. 26-yard return. We take another look. Corsadas again, pressured again, this time from behind. Well, he got popped, too. I tell you, he... Every time he's thrown the football here in the second half, he's ended up on his back. First and 10 at the 47-yard line for the Pitt Panthers. Gladman has the ball, and he is driven out of bounds on the far side. I tell you, if you like defense, you love this one, right? They hit, they're hitting. This is what you call an old-timey head knocking here at Ohio Stadium. No gain on the last play. It'll be second and 10 at the 47. Well, there were many of us who thought that the new rules for pass blocking would make it impossible to have a low-scoring game as it all be high scores. That was not true, obviously. Yeah, it's got two teams out here very deep athletically. They got a lot of talent, and they're really playing it head up right at the line of scrimmage. And Jimmy going up to the 47-yard line. Ben Wilson, the tight end, made the catch, and Johnson made the tackle. And Johnson. This telecast is authorized under broadcast rights granted by the Big Ten Conference and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, rebroadcast, or retransmission of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game in whole or in part without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference and Turner Broadcasting is prohibited. And Jimmy, and Jimmy with a lot of people, and Jimmy still alive, hits the deck at the 50. Well, that's the first sack for Ohio State. And I tell you, Coach Jimmy's done an outstanding job of running away from the rush when he gets in trouble, but he just couldn't do it here. Take a look. Everybody's covered. They had a little stun on on the outside. Pepper Johnson's right there. Good move. He spun away, but he got sacked for a four-yard loss. That is Lanise going deep now to receive the punt expected on fourth down. Pittsburgh is punting, and it is Rudison back there to do the kicking. Goes over and out of bounds. It'll be lined up along the sideline at about the 35-yard line. Yep. Yep. Ohio State's leading 3-0. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Here at Ohio Stadium, we just got a greeting up on the message board, and so did TBS get a greeting, and we're all delighted to be here with this uh, football game here tonight at Ohio Stadium. Ohio State leading 3-0. They have the ball first and 10 to 30. Roots and just had a 20-yard punt. Give it to tailback Wildridge, and uh, he got it up there to about the 33-yard line, make it second down and seven. Well, that was a poor punt because if he could have got a good punt inside the maybe 15-yard line, it would have given Ohio State poor field position. In a way, Pittsburgh's been playing defense. It would have been a great plus, but he shanked it. And Lindsay, I've always said I got two teams. I think the only two things that haven't improved in the last 20 years are punting and digital radios in your car. I'll tell you. <laughs> you can be right. Second down play coming here. That's the pitch. Wilders with the ball, and oh, he's going nowhere. At the 33-yard line, which is the line of scrimmage, he is pulled out. You're not listening to me, Lindsay. You better throw the football. <laughs> I tell you, watch this linebacker crew here. You think they won't pop you. Look at number 50. Good reaction. This is Steve Apke. He's made a host of tackles tonight. Boy, he's been all over the football field. And Tony Woods gives him a little help. Third down and seven yards to go for Ohio State. The ball is at their own 33, and they're leading in the game by a score of three to nothing with five minutes, 16 seconds left to play in the third quarter. They've been blitzing him, not, to, not this time. Osados. Osados. And he's at the 42-yard line. And he's got the first down. He has. Apke made the hit. 
Both of these teams are going to rely on their quarterback to win this football game. There's Corsada. So he pushes it around the right side. He's trying to get a man free. He just ducks it down. He knows he's got the first down. He cuts back inside. Number 50, Steve Epke, but he makes the stop. First down and 10 yards to go. Corsada's from Fullerton, Georgia. He's, he's changing the play at the last. Well, it wasn't stop play a flag. He gave it to his fullback, yep. Cooper Garrett. He changed the play, and then that young line, that young offensive line up there just couldn't handle the change, and they were off sides. They were moving. They were, and that's a procedure penalty. It'll cost them five. Let's see if we can pick up the shot. Now, here he goes. There's the movement to left guard. 68, Jeff. Real and head. That's a dead Nick. ball, ball start. Still first down. First and 15 at the 37 yard line for the Buckeyes. Cooper and Wooldridge in the eye formation. Wooldridge to the outside trying to cut back. Just short of the 40 yard line. Got about three. It'll be second, about 12 yards to go. Callahan made the tackle. Clock is running with less than four minutes remaining to be played in this quarter. Lanise is coming out to a wide right, Carter to a wide left. Arsados has quarterback the Buckeyes throughout. Out of the short drop, puts it up now. Carter, incomplete. Boy, oh, he got wiped out that time. It was Austin covering there. Chris Carter went up for the football, double covered over there. Of course, Pittsburgh brings in Terrell Austin as the nickelback in that defense. Second long, third long passing situation. You'll see Austin. Tight end Taggart comes back into the ball game. Hutchison goes out for Ohio State. This is the third down and long. Carter's on the right side. And he'll have two men over there with him. Garcadas. Carter. Austin again. And Austin is again. And uh, it is flipped over now and at bats all the way down inside the 20. Jones, Quentin Jones. Austin was there. Quentin Jones ended up with it and has returned it down to the 18-yard line. Well, they had him double covered over there, Lindsay. It was Quentin Jones and Terrell Austin, nickelback, that we were just talking about. Watch him roll up in his zone over here. Grisadis went out on a deep corner pattern over here. You can see both of the defensive men right there. And Austin had it. Austin had a hold of the football, and he kept it up in the air. And Quentin Jones said, look what happened to the football. It's right in my arms. So he takes it back on the interception, takes it all the way back to the 17-yard line. Quentin Jones. So now it is the Pittsburgh Panthers who have not scored in this ballgame, trailing by three points, threatening here. Gladman takes it and goes inside. The 15 to the 14 and thrown back hard. That'll be marked. That Leach made the tackle. Scott Leach is playing uh, second half for Chris Spielman. Spielman's out of the ball game with an injured left ankle. I hadn't seen any action here in the second half. Scott Leach is now in there. You see Quentin Jones there along the sideline who just intercepted and ran that ball back deep into Ohio State territory. Second down play, it's inside the 15-yard line. keep it take it out of bounds at the 12-yard line jimmy picked up about two yards third down play coming up remember that twice before pittsburgh has been down here and have come away empty and they're down here for the third time ohio state's leading by a score of three nothing two minutes 48 seconds left in the third quarter and jimmy look it over the sidelines wants to play going to get it for Glenn Mason, the offensive coordinator over there for Pittsburgh. He's going to call time. He's going to call time. He couldn't get it, so he called time for a little direct communication along the sideline. 
So the score is still 3-0, Ohio State leading. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. Especially while we were a quarterback, John Kojimi is over on the sidelines talking to the offensive coordinator for Pittsburgh. He said it was Glenn Mason. He's the offensive coordinator for Ohio State. Offensive coordinator, of course, for Pittsburgh is Chuck Stuber. There's time remaining in the third quarter. Ohio State leading 3 0. It is third down, five yards to go. And the ball is on the 12 yard line of Ohio State. And Jimmy's the quarterback. And Jimmy with the football, and he's hit at the 15 yard line by Coley. Coley got there first, and Darrell Lee was there soon afterwards. Fourth down coming up. Take another look, end zone shot of this. From Jimmy trying to get loose. And he's being pressured right away from the outside. And Larry Kolick, number 33 on the stop, the senior. Mark Frasco will try a field goal now, and it'll be a 31-yard attempt. And Jimmy will hold for him. It's good to tie the score. It is no good. No good, he missed it again. He missed it again. It is no good. From almost the very same spot. Almost the same spot. It'll be put in play on the 20. Score is still 3 0 Ohio State. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. Let's go along the sideline. First and 10 now. Taken to the outside by Wolgrick. And he got it most a yard, so it'll be second down and nine yards to go at the 21-yard line. Callahan made the tackle. Lindsey, I can have a lot of empathy for that young man, number five, a kicker, Brasco. I've missed a lot of field goals myself, and in a game of this importance, this magnitude, you're on national television, and he's missed two kind of chip shots for him. He was six out of 14 last year. He wasn't that good a kicker, and I know he was hoping to start off the year on a better note, and he's missed two easy field goals, and he's got to feel very bad right now. Second down, Crosado steps the ball for Ohio State. Back to throw, pumps it, and it's up there to the 24, maybe 25-yard line. Wildridge was the receiver. Apke made the tackle. Being marked just short of the 25-yard line. Call it third down and five yards to go. Here comes Ed Taggart back in the tight end, and here comes Dino Dawson in at a wide receiver for Ohio State. Well, it's very evident that they missed Keith Barnes. I think we should reiterate that. Heisman Trophy candidate, one of the great backs in Ohio State history, sitting over there on the sidelines. Can't do nothing. There you have it, a sack there. Our pitch break was Tony Woods. We got the Crestados. Big junior, Tony Woods. Oh, let nobody block him at all. Crestados had no shot on the sack here. The right tackle over there, Larry Cotterman. You see him, number 72, he turn around as if you don't know where he is. Well. He missed the block completely, and Tony Woods did the rest. And to do the punting now is Tom Tupa, and Austin has dropped back deep to receive it for Pittsburgh. Tupa will be kicking from his own end zone. He's averaged 44 yards on three punts tonight, Lindsay, and he'll get a chance to boom this one. The official blows the whistle because time has run out in the quarter before they could snap it. That's the end of the period, and that is the end of the third quarter with the score. Ohio State three and Pittsburgh nothing. So we'll be back in just a moment. Cooper's back to do the punting from the end zone, and it's going to be Austin and Pensley deep to receive it for Pittsburgh. Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning here as we start the fourth quarter. Ohio State leading three nothing. Austin Deep takes it at his 37-yard line. To his 40, to his 45, to 50. And he gets it down to the 45-yard line of Ohio State. And for a highlight now, let's go to the studio. We also have a close one in Birmingham. Texas A&M with the ball. Final minute of the third quarter. Kevin Murray to Anthony Tony. The big fullback goes in for the touchdown to tie it up. A&M 10, Bama 10. Back to Paul and Lindsey. 
All right, and here are our third quarter stats. Very, very close, Lindsay. There's only nine yards different offensively, but I'll tell you, it's really been second half. I think Pittsburgh's had the edge. And Jimmy is quarterbacking. Here's it off to his tailback, and that is Gladman with the football, and he gets it down to the 30-yard line. He's got 14 yards. Right again, the again, Lindsay, oh, they've been inside the 15-yard line three times. They have yet to put any points on the board. Two easy field goals they missed, and watch this. A little counteraction. Gladman makes a good cut back. He gets 14 yards. He finally hit by Terry White. First and 10 at the 31 yard line for the Panthers of Pitt. How much more pressure can this Ohio State defense take? Deflected incomplete. At about the five yard line, Gordon got a hand on it. Sonny Gordon. It should have been intercepted though, Lindsay. It was deflected. Gordon had his eye on it. He just misjudged it. That ball should have been intercepted. Let's take another look. Oh, Jimmy, off of play action. He's got time. He steps up into the pocket. Now watch number seven. I hope we got a good shot of this. He just overreacts. See, he just too quick. He was moved in there too quick. He should have made that interception. He was off balance. He almost got the uh, deflection for a touchdown. Second and ten. And Jimmy with the ball. Incomplete. Trying to get it to Clint Wilson. Rogan covering defensively. It'll be third down and ten at the 31-yard line. The bid is six of nine on third down conversions. 0 for two in this half. They were very, very good in the first half. But they, they moved the football. This Ohio State defense has had the pressure on all night long. They've been asked to stop Pittsburgh. And they have. Third down play. Gladman again, 25, 20. First down inside the 15 yard line. First and 10 at the 14. Caught him napping, Lindsay. Third and long. Run a little delay with Gladman. And boy, he wasn't to be denied either. He broke a few tackles. Picks up 17 big yards. Beautiful ground level shot here of Gladman. He breaks a tackle there, now he breaks one, another tackle. So they're trying to arm tackle this young man and it's a little difficult. It's finally stopped by Gordon. First and 10 for Pitt. Ohio State leading three nothing in the fourth quarter. And Jimmy is the quarterback. And Jimmy going. Touchdown. 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 One time too many, Lindsey. Pittsburgh was down there one time too many. Watch this Chuck catch. Scales by Chuck Scales. I was going to say a beautiful pitch by Clint Jimmy. He drops straight back. A beautiful pitch down the left side. Scales had beaten his man on the outside. That's William White. And Pittsburgh is finally into the end zone after being down here four times. Another look. Another misjudgment on a deflection there by an Ohio State. So that. Brasco will attempt the conversion now. And it's good. Makes the conversion to make the score now. Pittsburgh 7, Ohio State 3. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. Take another look at that touchdown pitch by John Cook. Jimmy, his third touchdown pitch of the, of the year. He had two against Purdue. It's a beautiful pitch right on the money to Chuck Scales. Now he's beating William White down here. He misjudges it. And that misjudgment on that interception by Sonny Gardner is going to haunt him. He should have had the football injury on that interception. The very next play, they get six. Pittsburgh kicking off. It's Viancourt kicking off in deep for Dawson and Workman for Ohio State. 13 minutes, 43 seconds left to play in the game, and the Pitt Panthers have gone ahead of the Buckeyes now by a score of 7-3. to three. That is uh, Dawson, number 4, Workman, number 42. Back here on the goal line to receive it for Ohio State. Ryan Court. Dawson at the one-yard line. He's out to the 5, to the 10, to the 15. And that's the end of the line. First down and 10 yards to go for the Buckeyes at their own 15. 
Here is the scoring drive. Time of possession, a minute and five. 14-yard reception by Scales on a pass from and Jimmy. Here's a big play on that drive. Gladman, 17-yard draw play. Rosales across the quarterback. It was third and long, too, when he talked to the high state defense, napping a little bit. They've got to go upstairs. They've only got about 38 yards rushing. That's unbelievable. Of course, uh, we don't have bars back there, do we? Carter and Lanise double to the left side. Go out to the up back. Cooper carried the football, and Cooper got at best a yard out to the 16 to make it second down and nine. I'm like the, I'm like the fans on that one, Lindsay. You can forget that play now. They trail by four. That's not going to do anything anymore. You're in the fourth quarter. you got to throw the football. I think Mr. Bruce knows that. Lavinia made the last tackle. It's out at the 16-yard line now. Second down and nine for the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Lanise and Carter both double to the left side now. Just wasted down and handed up to that up back off the right guard, right tackle. Mason motion back toward the inside. Carsadis take the handoff this time. Scrambles out and is tackled from behind at the 10 yard line. At the 10 yard line, Tony, Tony Woods, Woods made the tackle and he almost ran over the referee coming out in high jubilation. The reason he's here at Pittsburgh is because his idol, Hugh Green. Hugh Green called him a few times. And he ended up at Pittsburgh. He's got a brother on this football team who's a freshman, and he's having a whale of a night, Lindsay. Number 90, there he is, Tony Woods. Third down and 15 yards to go for the Buckeyes back on their own 10. Barsados, the quarterback. There's a whistle that will stop playing the markers, so this play will not count. Whistles before he got it off. So regardless of what happened, it's to no avail. Everywhere number two, Chris Carter goes. He's got two white jerseys. And John Lewis. Lewis and Terrell Austin, the nickelback, are going with Mr. Carter everywhere he goes, Lindsay. Two men. Dead ball, ball start. Still third down. Saw the movement there by the left guard. It's third and 20 at the five-yard line. Third and 20 at the five-yard line. Penalty free Pittsburgh. Only one penalty. Rosado still the quarterback. On the end zone. He gets out and throws. Lemis. Lanise, first down. Lanise, first down and 10 yards to go at the 28 yard line. Pretty cool quarterback. Pretty cool quarterback that time, Lindsay. He just took his tack. Looked like he was going to get sacked for two here and a safety. Uh, he wasn't fooling anybody with play action there. He knew he's going to throw the football right there. He got out of the grass and then watch this beautiful pitch to Mike Lanise. And they got the first down, a 23 yard pickup. So it is first down and 10 yards to go now. Ball is spotted near the 27-yard line. What a big play down there. Workman's in there, tailback now. And he gets the football. And he gets a yard to the 28, and that's all. It'll be second and nine at the 28. Callahan made the tackle. They don't like it. And I tell you, the reason why, it's a Pittsburgh defense. They have yet to let this offensive line off the hook. I tell you, they have stuffed the offensive line of Ohio yeah. State all night long. Tight end Ed Taggart has come back into the ball game now for the Buckeyes. Second down play coming here. Casados with the football. Carter could not hang on to that when he tried to one-handed and could not. Covering with Troy Washington at 43. Third down coming in nine. He had three men there. He had his Lewis. He had Austin there as usual. You see number four, that's John Lewis. Now watch, he tries to go down the field to Carter. And you'll see 19 and four there. Wherever you see number two, you're going to see 19 and four. And 43 this time. They had a triple cover. Troy Warchin. Third down play coming here. Workman the tailback, Cooper's the fullback. 
Doug Smith is in there now as well as a wide receiver. Barsadas. Barsadas. And it is incomplete. Almost intercepted at the 44 of Ohio State. Vince Workman. He picked out the wrong guy. Workman was open, Lindsay, to the right side. And he just, just missed him. He tried to throw on downfield a little deeper and it was incomplete. So on fourth down now, they'll have to give it up. And Tom Tupa has come in to do the punting. Oge Fazio getting in a little uh, conversation with uh, the official there. Dropping back is Terrell Austin, number 19, to receive the punt of Tom Tupa. Looking at the 40-yard line, and uh, that's it right there. Back there was Keith uh, Tinsley, and it was Keith Tinsley who took the ball. Tinsley took it at the 40, and we'll be back in just a moment. The Pitt Panthers have the ball first down and 10 yards to go. They have it at their own 40-yard line. They have the lead by a score of 7-3. We have 10 minutes, 51 seconds left to play in this game at Ohio Stadium, the first night game ever played by the Buckeyes at home. Charles Gladwin with the football, and he gets it out there to about the 43-yard line. I tell you, he'll have a few easier games than this one. He's got about 86 yards rushing now, 87 yards, and they've been tough, tough yards tonight against just fine Ohio State defense, but he has really been a workhorse. He's going to have a few bruises on him tomorrow, night, Lindsay. Second down and about seven yards to go. Chuck Scales is in a wide right now for Ken Jimmy. And Jimmy with the ball. Pumps it up there for his tight end incomplete. Somebody ran a wrong pattern. He's going downfield now to talk to one of his receivers. Send it for Wilson. It'll be third down and seven at the 43. There's a flag down over there around the 50-yard line. Let's pick it up. I think it's against Pittsburgh. It is that. It's against the Panthers. It'll be stepped off, and then we'll hear from the referee, John Nielsen. It almost feels that this Ohio State defense is going to have to make a break for this team somehow with the interception on turn. Eligible receiver downfield, loss of down. You heard it? An eligible downfield. Take the yardage and the down, so it's going to make it third long. Huh? Third and 12 now. At the 38 yard line. And Jimmy, still with the football. And he gets up to the 42, and that's all. Lee made the tackle, Darrell Lee. Uh, state defense has done its work here. Pressure's on the offense, Lindsey, for uh, State. They just can't move the football running it at all against Pittsburgh. That will bring the punting unit onto the field now. Bill Rudison coming in to do the punting. And Lanise has dropped back deep. Lanise has gone deep. Rudison uh, has not boomed him out of there tonight. Lanise moving over. He's at the 20-yard line. Lanise to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, and out of bounds. So Lanise with the return. And they will start first and 10. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. We're in an old-fashioned Big Ten type battle here at Ohio State before a packed crowd. First and 10 now for the Buckeyes. The ball is at their 35. Pittsburgh leads seven to three. Moved up to the 41 yard line. Woolridge carried and Apke made the tackle. And they're guessing right. They're letting Chris Carter, they got a man to man on first down, and of course Ohio State's playing right into that hand. They're running the football. So now on second down, when they gain a yard or two, that was a pretty good uh, gain as far as Ohio State's been the best game, I think, in the second half. But they've got to move Carter in motion and try to get man to man on him. They have they to stick him out left or right. Second down and four yards to go at the 41 yard line. 
Sutter. And it's complete. He's tied in across the 50-yard line. Hutchinson, Hutchinson, the receiver there. It'll be marked at the 50. First down and 10 yards to go. Now we've been saying all second half, they've got to throw the football to move it. They just can't do it on the ground. And here, out of the eye, play action. Big tight end here. John Hutchinson made a good move to the outside. He tries to turn up field, but he's got the first down. Midfield. Buckeyes are trailing in the ball game. Pitt is leading by a score of 7 to 3. We're in the fourth quarter. First and 10 at the 50-yard line. Osadis has the football. Complete. Inside the 35-yard line. And that's the man who can break the back, Chris Carter. Now, he had double coverage again, Lindsey. As I said, I, I really think they're going to have to put this man in motion before it's over with. You see Carter coming down. Here comes a linebacker back. He cuts over the middle, and he should have some inside help with the safety. But they don't play him tight. They played him very soft on the inside. First down and 10 yards to go. Ohio State at the pitch break, 33. Eight minutes, 18 seconds left to play in the game. Go to the tailback. Woolridge with the ball, and he gets to the 30-yard line. He picked up three, and that'll be second down and seven yards to go. Lavinia made the tackle for Pitt. Stop on the play by number 45, Matt Coming back into the ball game now, Taggart, along with Carter, who had been out for one play. There's a quarterback comparison for tonight's game. Sotters brings him up, second and seven. Barsadas. On a diving catch at the 21. Taken by Taggart. Ed Taggart the tight end. Very wisely, he's gone to his tight end in this series. Barsadas gets out of the way. We said he lost 16 pounds, the same as his number there, over the year, and he moves around a little bit better. He's back here. He sees a little trouble on the inside. He gets out. He dumps it to his tight end. And that's another first down, and Ohio State is on its move. It's the Buckeyes who are driving now with seven minutes, 23 seconds left to play in the game. Pittsburgh leading by a score of seven to three. By Sotis, the quarterback. Carter's got man-to-man -man out there right now. Gave it to the up back. Gave it to the he fumbled. Back. He fumbled the football. Cooper, and it did for shaking loose. Got to throw it on first down. He keeps running it on first down, Lindsey. It may be Pittsburgh's ball. He caught Pitt, it up. Pitt indicating they think they got it. Little trouble getting them unstacked there, as you see. Well, you think they're not scrambling underneath that pile right there. I tell you. It is Ohio State's ball. Oh, and Pittsburgh did. They do not like it. And that's Cooper, number 44, who had all the football. We'll get a ground level shot here. There's Cooper now. He's got the football. He gets hit by Lavinia right there. There's the football. It's coughed up right there. Nobody knows it's a fumble yet, except Pittsburgh. And I think who's the I couldn't see who got the football back for Ohio State. I think it was Cooper. He got his fumble back. Second and nine at the 20. The clock is running, second and nine for the Buckeyes at the pit 20-yard line. Rosada, oh my, from the blind side. He was overcome, and it was John Carter who got to him. John Carter, the sophomore, 6'5", 250, just forcing his way in, forcing his way around the block for the sack. Third and 16, back at the 27-yard line now. That's a fourth sack for that Pittsburgh defense tonight, Lynn. Timeout, Ohio. Timeout taken by the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Six minutes, 13 seconds left to play, and we'll be back in just a moment. The Buckeyes of Ohio State has the ball. Carsados, number 16, will call the next play in the huddle. Third down, 16 yards to go. Ohio State's ball at the Pittsburgh 27. Pittsburgh leading 7 to 3, 6 minutes, 13 seconds. Left to play in the game at Ohio Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. Double receiver to the left side. Carter and Lanise. Lanise in motion back to the inside. Carsados with the football rolling. And he throws to Woodridge, and it's complete. Woodridge down to the 10-yard line. 
Wilder's out of bounds at the eight yard line. Now I want to tell you, Chris Carter took everybody away from that zone. They double covered Carter and he took everybody and they hit the vacant zone. A beautiful call from the sidelines. Third and 16, this is the eighth time that Ohio State has converted on a third down. Look at everybody go with number two in the middle and it opens it up on the outside. For Wildridge, and he's got the first down. He picked up 19 big yards. Casados has the next play, and he is signaling back to confirm it. We're getting a few substitution. Workman comes into the ball again. Wildridge comes out, and Workman comes in at tailback. Lanise is coming out. Workman is the tailback now, and Cooper is the up back. Two tight ends, Taggart and Hutchison. The ball is at the eight-yard line. Carter across. Workman, the freshman, goes to the five-yard line. Second down and goal to go at the five-yard line. Lavinia and Apke made the stop for the Pitt Panthers. They beat this Pittsburgh defense on the inside from tackle to tackle down here. They're going to show me something, I'll tell you that, because they have been just unrelenting all night long against Ohio State on the inside. John Wooldridge comes back into the ball game. Workman comes off the field. Carter's coming off the field for this play. Carter's come off. It is second down and goal to go at the five-yard line. A full house at Ohio Stadium. Gotta get outside. Wildred got two yards. He got two. It'll be third down and goal at the three-yard line. John Carter and Dennis Atea made the tackle. Atea. Boy, he's played well all night. Dennis Atea, big senior. Harold Bruce is a busy man. There's the play coming in with Chris Carter. He's delivered it now. The ball is spotted outside the three-yard line. The clock is running. Five minutes remain to be played in the game. Pittsburgh leading right now, 7-3, but the Buckeyes are driving. Got two downs, third down. I think they'll go on fourth down. Cooper and Woldridge are the backs. And the quarterback keeps uh -huh. the ball, and he goes to the one-yard line. Carsadas. Carsadas cuts it to the one-yard line, where it'll be fourth down and a yard to go. John Carter made the stop for Pitt. Along with Apke. It's a long yard, Lindsay. It's a little bit more than a yard. Let's call a yard and a half. That's what it is. And so it's fourth down coming up with goal to go. Carter has come off, and they're calling time. They're calling time from the sideline. The Buckeyes want to talk this one over. Four minutes, 24 seconds left to play. Timeout. They'll have a fourth down, about a yard and a half to go. You can waste a timeout here, I'll tell you that. They're not any worried. They want to be sure of this play. Fourth down, the ball lays right inside the two-yard line. We're going to stay right here now. This crowd is on its feet, and they're just quietening down just for a little bit to quiet before the storm, because the storm will come when the Buckeyes come up to the line of scrimmage, because they're down there now where they can do some damage. Our next TV game next week, Memphis State versus Florida State on Super Football Saturday, starting at 12 noon Eastern time. And our next primetime game will be at Maryland for West Virginia versus Maryland next Saturday night on Super Football Saturday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time. So we hope you'll join us next Saturday for a lot of Super Football. The Buckeyes are in their huddle now. And uh, Pitt Panthers have also gone into a huddle. Now, let's see, there's two things, of course. Earl Bruce is loves, if he throws it, he loves to go to his tight end in this situation. Now, it could be a runner pass with the rollout. I think it's very tough inside tackle. The tackle they have yet to try it outside. Taggart is in there at tight end. Wildridge is the tailback. Hutchison is also in there, double tight end. Cooper is the fullback. Ball is inside the two-yard line. Fourth down and goal to go. This is a big play in the ballgame. Casados is the quarterback. Casados. Touchdown, Carter. Touchdown, Carter. There it is, the big man, the big play. Eight touchdowns last year. And he is being mobbed. Absolutely mobbed in the end zone. Chris Carter did a little move to the outside. He came in motion and then went back and made a little corner move and he was wide open. He finally got that man, the man we were talking about, at the two-yard line. There he is. Garcia is a beautiful pitch. Look at this pitch. And he had beaten his man on the outside, Quinton Jones, who in all honesty has been doing an outstanding job all night in covering Chris Carter. Here it is. Garcia to the outside. Beautiful pitch. 
and a good catch. And Carter finally got man to man. He's caught seven tonight. Rich Spangler's on the attempt to conversion. Rich Spangler. As a whistle that stops play. Whistle that stops play and flags. Somebody beat the snap. Score right now is nine to seven. Ohio State with a conversion attempt still coming. It is against Ohio State. Boy, what a hard hit football game we've seen here. Tonight. Dead ball, illegal procedure, offense. Moves it back to the eighth. They have a conversion attempt coming still. 419 on the clock. The Pittsburgh Panthers seven, four minutes, 19 seconds remain to be played in this game. And the way these two teams have played football here tonight, all sorts of things could happen. Sure can. These two teams have really gone at it. And you gotta hand it to the Pittsburgh offense when the, I mean, the uh, Ohio State offense, the pressure was, was on. They had four downs inside the 10 yard line and they had to go upstairs finally to make it. I really don't think they had too much confidence running the football. They tried three times and they got about eight, eight yards out of it. And I don't know if they could have made it inside the tackles. Lindsay at Pittsburgh defense has been so good, but Chris Carter got loose. But if somebody says to you, does Ohio State miss Keith Byers, you say yes, yes, yes. yes. yes absolutely. There is Boge Fazio, head coach of the Pitt Panthers. He'll be getting the football. The Panthers will. Rich Spangler will kick it off for Ohio State. And if Ohio State holds on for this three-point victory, Mr. Uh, Foge is going to say next week, Fazio is going to look back at all those times inside the 20-yard line. Two missed field goals. They blew, they blew three or four opportunities, Lindsay, to put points on the board early. Keith Tinsley is center deep to receive it now for Pittsburgh. Knuckleball. Tinsley made a stab at it. That's Tinsley. It's in the end zone. And it's a touchback. A touchback. No points. Just a touchback. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. That's all. He got a little shook up, though. He didn't know the rule, I'll tell you that. <laughs> he didn't. The impetus of the ball was the kickoff, and so he comes out to the 20 yard line. He wanted to pick it up and run it. One of those veterans down there said, Take it easy. Just stay here. It's a touchback. So now, the Pitt Panthers get the football. They trail, trail by three points. And here comes Pittsburgh. And Jimmy is the quarterback. He's been in there all night. Brown and Gladman in the eye. Gladman gets it out across the 30-yard line. That should be enough for a first down. Gordon made the tackle, Sonny Gordon. Tackle by Sonny Gordon. You see the clock running? Or oh, rather, it's not at the moment, but it'll be running on the snap. As soon as the chains are moved, it'll be uh, started again, of course. College football, the clock stops while the chains are moved on a first down. It's moving now. And Jimmy, the quarterback for Pitt. Again, it's going to be the tailback, Gladman. Got it out to the 36-yard line, and Sonny Gordon made the tackle. Now, if you're wondering why Sonny Jimmy Gordon. is running the football with 346, they got plenty of time on the clock. They know that the Ohio State defense is playing a little soft right now, expecting the pass, and they moved it up to uh, two quick first downs. Gladman is over 100 yards rushing now, I think. Yes, 20 carries, 103 yards. Second and four at the 36-yard line. Now they'll open it up a little bit. And Jimmy... With the football, and Jimmy heads for the sideline and goes out. He headed for the flag at the 40, and I think he got across, which would make it a first down if he did. And I tell you, as a former kicker, there's a gentleman over on the sideline of Pittsburgh, Mr. Brasco, who's missed two field goals. I've been in his position, and he's looking up on that board. He's three points behind, and he's not too happy right now, Lindsay. And he, more than anybody on that Pittsburgh bench, 
hope that they'd get six points out of this drive. First and ten at the 40-yard line. And Jimmy. It's incomplete. Incomplete. Could not be held on by Charles Gladman. Gladman, his tailback. It'll be second and ten at the 40-yard line. Stops the clock with three minutes, 11 seconds to play. Get a replay. Gray slips out of the backfield. A good shot here coming up. Right there, it's a beautiful pitch. He just didn't keep his eye on it. For Jimmy tonight, 11 out of 18 for a 127. But those stats are a little bit misleading because he has played, I think, a superb game at quarterback. Second down and 10 yards to go. And again, the tailback. Gladman stopped by Leach. Leach has played an outstanding game at linebacker. And he filled in for Chris Spielman, who was supposed to be a uh, talented All-American here in only his sophomore year, but he hurt his ankle, and he hasn't seen any action here in the second half. And Leach, as Lindsay said, he has been dominant here in the middle. Man, he plays. He's been all over the field. The clock goes on. They're going for it, of course. Third down and nine yards to go. No, oh, I thought it was fourth down. Third down. And Jimmy... Right the middle there. The ball got away. The scramble is on. Ball is at the 46-yard line. For oh, Matt, Matt Stennett. He put it right in there for Jimmy. Watch this pitch. This is beautiful. 16-yard pickup. He completes it to Matt Stennett, number 24 over the middle on a watch. He was really hit. Number 12, Terry White calls the fumble. And very alertly, Chuck Scales gets it back for Pittsburgh. There's number 24, Matt Stannett. He gets hit by Terry White, coughs up the football. And I tell you, this may be a big play for Mr. Scales, the biggest one of the night. He gets it back. First down. First down and 10 yards to go with the ball at the 46-yard line. And Congeny looks for anybody. Congeny looking for the sideline. He goes out of bounds. Run out over there by Rogan. And he's seven yards. He was knocked seven yards into the bench of Ohio State, and he gets up. He's okay. We want to thank our statistician tonight, Elvin Lindblad, and our spotter, Mike Davis, and our Ohio State Director of Athletics, uh, uh, certainly, and to Coach Earl Bruce and his staff, and to SID Marvin Homan, to Pittsburgh Direct Director of Athletics, Dr. Edward Bozick, Coach Coach Fazio and his staff, and SID Jim O'Brien. Our thanks to all of them for their help for us the last few days here in Columbus, Ohio. Second down, 11 yards to go. Ball is at the 47-yard line. And it is intercepted. It's intercepted and brought back to the 49-yard line by White, William White. William White is intercepted for Ohio State. Well, the ball was on the right hash mark, Lindsay, and he tried to throw a sideline pattern way over on the left side, and by the time the football got there, William White reacted to it. It was just too far to throw a, a 12 or 13-yard pattern over there. You watch now, the line of scrimmage is on the right sideline. The uh, center is way over on the right hash mark, and he tried to throw it all the way across field. And by that time, William White makes the interception for Ohio State. So the Buckeyes have the football. Another look. He just had too, too far to throw the football, Lindsay, from the right hash mark side all the way over to the left. Our thanks to Rick Bay, the director of athletics here at Ohio State University and his entire staff. There are the turnovers for the night. First and 10 at the 43-yard line. Casados, the quarterback, and leave it on the ground. Just up across the 46. Woolridge carried on the play. It's out about the 46-yard line. Callahan made the stop there as the clock showing 132 left to play in the game. Well, they only needed that one drive, and they got it, Lindsey. Corsada set the controls, took it down, and put the touchdown on the board. I think they got a lot of work to do in the Big Ten if they expect to be as powerful as last year because they need a lot of work on their running game. It really seemed to lack here tonight. And Pittsburgh on the other side, a much improved football team over last year. They're going to win a lot of football games this year. Ohio State, of course, starting tonight to try to accomplish something that has been done in the Big Ten only twice in the last 30 years, and that is to win consecutive Big Ten championships. The Buckeyes did it in 1954 and 55. 
Michigan State did it in 1965 and 66. And it hasn't been done since. Ohio State, of course, won it last year. Following the game on most of these stations, the football action report. Super football Saturday continues with all the information about the football games that have been played all around this land this afternoon and tonight. This, the first night game ever played by the Buckeyes at home at Ohio Stadium. Clock will start now on the snap. It'll be second down and seven at the 46, their own 46 for the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Timeouts remaining, one each. Salas brings him up. Carter's in the wide left. Gives it to Cooper. George Cooper to the 50 yard line. He got four. Third and about three. Tony Woods made the tackle, and Pittsburgh takes a timeout. They spin their last one. The executive producer for TBS Sports is Don Ellis. Tonight's game has been produced by Michael Lardner, directed by Tom Smith, technical director Mark Johnson, associate producer George Smith, and associate director Gary Lehman, and the entire TBS crew that has made this telecast possible from here at Ohio Stadium in Columbus, Ohio, one of the shrines of college football. And it's been a battle here between the Pitt Panthers and the Buckeyes tonight. Harkening back to the days when teams battled each other head to head, scored few points. We have seen so many points scored early this college season that there was a feeling in some quarters that perhaps the days of such football games were gone because of the change in rules that we'd have high scoring games. Well, for the most part, we've had high scoring games across the land, but here tonight, we have had a good old fashioned head knocking. We sure have, and both these teams uh, can feel very proud of the way they played, even Pittsburgh. If they don't uh, come up with the miracle here, one first down, and they can just sit on it, walk, uh, run out the clock. But Pittsburgh can hold its head high tonight, Lindsay. They played a very, very good football game, and they're going to look back at a lot of blown opportunities to come out a winner tonight. Going off the field is Quentin Jones, with members of the training staff. Of course, the Pitt Panthers won their first game by a one-point margin over Purdue, 31 to 30. This is the opener for Ohio State. One minute, 26 seconds on the clock. Third down, about four yards to go at the 50. Arsadas, the quarterback. finally and uh, there's a flag right side of the offensive line just couldn't hold it any longer it's a long count boy that's the toughest thing in the world for those offensive linemen they get down they get set they want to come off that football and fire off and then they've got to hold it for six or seven counts that's the movement illegal procedure Ohio penalty illegal procedure You'll see some movement over on the right side. Larry Cotterman, I think, 72. Yep, he was moving also the right Dead guard. Ball. Mr. Gilmore. False guard, still third down. And nine yards to go. Ohio State's ball at their own 45. Clock never started, of course, on that set because they never snapped the ball. That's right. Arsada springs them up again. Woodridge bounces outside. John Woodridge gets about two up area. to the 47. That was Austin, Terrell Austin on the tackle. It'll be fourth down and seven yards to go. And they'll let the clock run down. Might even take a five yard penalty and have to punt it. Ball has been marked ready for play, and we have 58 seconds left to play in this game. They're in no particular hurry. Tupa is the punter. Ohio State leading 10 to 7. They just let it tick, and it's just ticking. 
they'll take a five yard penalty. Yes, they will. Yeah. The punter now is in a big hurry, as you can see. And it's delay of game, says the referee. They wanted to make sure they took the 25 seconds off, didn't they? They did indeed. It's going to be fourth and 12 back at the 42. Coach Fazio. Dead ball. Delay of game, Ohio. Fourth down. They're lost in his drop back deep now. Cooper's in to do the punting. Let's see if they go for the block. They rushed 10 men last time. There's 10 men up there this time. Only Austin is deep. He's back at his own 12 yard line. He's gonna try to block it. Box says 36 seconds left in the game. Tupa is the punter. Down the penalty marker. They drew number 33, Larry Kolick off sides. Defensive men move, jump around. If that offensive man moves after he gets set, it's five yards. Oh, so it is the five. Dead ball foul, illegal procedure. Legal procedure, that's two 10 Dead yard ball, penalties. ball start, Ohio, still fourth down. And 17 at the 37. They got a shot. It's an outside shot. They're going to go for the block lens, I think. Cooper again going into punt formation. That is he. Sophomore. Austin still deep, and they're rushing 10. The Panthers are. Austin at the 22. Goes out of bounds at the 24. He did his job. He got out of bounds to stop the clock. 51-yard punt, a two-yard return. Scan Bell, ran, Sean Bell ran him out. So it'll be first down and 10 yards to go. Panthers have the ball at their own 24. The clock says 25 seconds left to play in this game. The Buckeyes of Ohio State are leading by a score of 10 to 7. Gives me time to say back home in Louisville, Kentucky, happy birthday to my little mama sitting home watching this game. Mama, I love you. And I'll be home tonight. And he just saved the amount of a Hallmark card. <laughs> First down and 10 yards to go. There's the clock, which starts on the snap. Well, he's still alive. And Jimmy is still alive and gets out of bounds at the 31-yard line. That was Camaro, who was all over him. Well, Michael Stewart he really makes a mental mistake here. You see him go by the camera here. Now, here's going Jimmy in trouble, and instead of going deep and trying to get open, number 30, Michael Stewart, comes back to the football. You'll see him standing in there in the picture right there. He should have been trying to go deep. Second down and three yards to go, 17 seconds to play. And Jimmy. Incomplete at the 50-yard line. Hill was the defender there, Steve Hill. He had it for a minute, Scales had it for a minute. Good hit by Steve Hill. Third and three at the 31. Steve Hill, the nickel back in the ball game. Boge Fazio in his fourth year as head coach at Pittsburgh, and Earl Bruce is in his seventh year as head coach at Ohio State. And Jimmy has, has completed only two of his last 10 passes. 10 seconds on the clock. Third down play coming. Michael Stewart's in the wrong position. I don't think he tips. Yep, trips right. Throw it home run. That is as far as he can throw it. And incomplete. An incompleted pass. Time has run out. The ball game is over. It's been a battle and it is all over here, but what a game it has been. The final score is Ohio State 10 and Pittsburgh 7. We'll be back in a moment. This is Turner Network Television. Thank you. 
Final score, Ohio State 10, Pittsburgh 7. Speaking for Paul Horning, this is Lindsey Nelson saying so long from Columbus, Ohio. And now, next week, it'll be Memphis State versus Florida State for the early game starting at 12 noon on Super Football Saturday. And we'll be in Maryland for the game West Virginia versus Maryland starting at 8 p.m. next week. Tonight's game has been brought to you by Bud Light, the light beer with the first name in taste. Everything else is just a light. And by A.C. Delco, the small parts. Brought to you by CNN. From Crossfire to Larry King Live, from Sports Tonight to Showbiz Today, CNN brings you programs that make news more interesting than you'd expect. First night game ever by a score of 10 to 7 over Pittsburgh. Lindsey Nelson speaking for Paul Horning. And now let's go to Craig Seger and Alec Hawkins in the studio. Points on the board, but what a thrilling game, 10-7. For a low-scoring game, is one of the most interesting games you ever want to see. Um, Ohio State went ahead 3 to nothing, kept the lead for a long time, although Pittsburgh dominated the game, missed four scoring opportunities, didn't get anything from it, and finally, late in that, uh, early in the fourth quarter, I guess it was, they went ahead seven to three, and then, of course, Ohio State showing what great teams do, and they met the challenge and dominated the thing. Jim Carsartos uh, just was outstanding, and they finally, of course, won 10 to seven. Lucky to get a victory without Keith Byers. They were that. Elsewhere tonight, just moments ago, in Birmingham, Alabama, it was Texas A&M against the Alabama Crimson Tide. That was also a close game until late when Craig Turner gets the call. Mike Shula hands off. He was supposed to go right up the middle, but he saw an opening to the right. He went 33 yards for the touchdown and put the game out of reach. The final 23 to 10, Alabama over Texas A&M. The Crimson Tide now 2-0. Other night games, updating quickly for you. TCU is leading Tulane 17-13. Texas Tech has defeated Tulsa 21-17. Virginia recovered five fumbles. Kenny Stadler tied the school record four out of five field goal attempts. Murray State, Memphis State tied 10 all late in the fourth quarter. East Carolina is on its way to a victory, 27-16. That is a final now. And Grambling over at Alcorn State, 27-20, late in the third quarter. Minnesota spotted Wichita State a 14-point lead. They have now come storming back, 28-14. Mississippi State with a big lead over Syracuse. Washington State has a touchdown against Arizona. Oregon State is leading California 13-10. New Mexico on top of uh, New Mexico State by 10. Long Beach State trailing San Diego State 10 to nothing. Louisiana Tech is leading Southwest Louisiana 24-17. UNLV is on top of Fresno State 3 to nothing. Those are the late games. Some of the games played this afternoon. You know, last year Keith Byers of Ohio State was the runner-up to Doug Flutie in the voting for the Heisman Trophy. He is already trailing Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson took advantage of another 205-yard rushing day to day, and that gives him a total of 495 yards in two games and six touchdowns. He was awesome. Yes, he is always. <laughs> and Auburn ranked number two in the country, moving up on the charts, challenging number one ranked Oklahoma. Oklahoma, of course, was idle. The final 29-18, Auburn over Southern Miss. Pittsburgh, as we mentioned, our game we just saw, lost to Ohio State 10-7. Oklahoma State trailing for much of this ball game, able to sneak it out 10-9 over North Texas State. Iowa, the offense, 58 points. The defense held Drake to minus 36 yards rushing. UCLA and Tennessee. Tennessee jumped out to a big lead in the ball game. Tony Robinson, the great quarterback for Tennessee, in trouble, but he's able to scramble, tosses the pass to Joey Klingsdale, who runs it in for the touchdown. Tennessee leading at this point 20 to 10. And you had to feel sorry for Tony Robinson because he did play such a fine game, and he is a heck of a quarterback. UCLA was able to come back late in the ball game. Steve Norty, he was benched a week ago. Rolls out his Al Wilson in the end zone. The two-point conversion made it 26-18, but they're still trailing by eight points. Then with 37 seconds to play, UCLA with the ball once more. Nori goes to the air. William Anderson, a tremendous catch in the corner of the end zone, but remember, they're still down by two. But on the two-point conversion, Nori to Gaston Green, and UCLA comes out with a moral victory after being behind by so much in the fourth quarter. 26-26 is the way the ball game ends. Penn State over Temple, 27-25. LSU, Dalton Hilliard, 142 yards, a pair of touchdowns. Michigan, Notre Dame, a wild one, 20-10. Michigan playing at home in front of 105,000. Jim Harborough to Gerald White for the touchdown. That put Michigan on top. Notre Dame came back. Stir Steve Berline, a chance to tie it, but Doug Mallory picks off the pass in the final, 20-12. Michigan under Bo Schembechler has never lost a home opener. 
Brigham Young, Washington 31-3, the final BYU winning it. Arkansas is leading Mississippi 17-12 in the fourth quarter. There's eight minutes left to go in that ball game. The Ole Miss still not lost. Other ball games for you. Baylor losing to Georgia earlier 17-14. Georgia Tech defeated North Carolina State 28-18. And Northwestern top Missouri 27-23. That's all the time we have. Hope to see you next week. This has been a presentation of Turner Network Television.